Hey everybody, I hope you've been out there creating the reality you want. It's going to be a good show, man. Moneybag73, come on in. Greetings, everybody. How's it going, brother? <laughs> good. You've been out there creating the reality that you want? Working on it. Nice, nice. All right, you guys. Well, um, we're gonna do. We're gonna attempt to do some call-ins at some point here. It's a little, you know, using the iPad um, is not ideal, but we're gonna we're gonna give it a shot because I know you guys probably have some questions for money bags. So, um, so what's been going on, money bags? Give us the scoop. Oh man. Well, let's see. I guess we can kind of start with things I don't usually talk about. Like this evening, I went shopping with my wife and we get off the freeway and there's a Staples uh, sign there. And I say to my wife, doesn't that, doesn't that staple L look kind of weird to you? And she just looks over at me. I say the same thing every time we go that way. <laughs> and so she just says, uh, yeah, kind of. And then we go around and she wanted to go to um, Joanne's. She said, hey, I need you to take me to Joanne's today. And I said, where'd you want to go? She says, Joanne's. I'm like, you mean Joanne? She's like, yeah, Joanne. <laughs> so she continues to call it Joanne's. She's been shopping there for a long time. And, uh, you know, I, I think I told you that she's not really on board with the whole Mandela thing. So um, anyway, we get off and we pull into the driveway and right there's his Skechers. And I'm like, hey, look at Skechers. Doesn't that look so odd without a T in there? And she just looks over at me again. And then <laughs> this is like all the time. I mean, I'm surprised, you know, she puts up with it, but I can't help it. I mean, I, I live in this whole different world now where every time I turn around, just something doesn't look right to me. And so uh, it's just so bizarre. I mean, I know she notices things, but she's just, uh, she can't understand how it, the impossible could actually have happened. So she's not really willing to entertain the idea. But at least she like doesn't come out and just say, don't talk about this ever again type thing. You know, she lets me talk about it, you know, because it's part of my life. I spent a lot of time researching it. But uh, yeah, so that's kind of the, um, kind of the average uh, evening, you know, evening out with the family. <laughs> just pointing pointing out Mandela effects. I mean, it's not always like that, but it, it happens a lot. It's hard not to. I mean, it's just a, such a crazy thing. And you then know, there's... Yeah, go what's ahead. That? Oh, no, no I was just going to say... I, I was going to say earlier, like earlier today, I was saying you can't unsee it as much as you try. No, I, I there's no... It's part of my life now. It's an everyday... It's part of my life every day. And so it's... And it's... It's changing. It's growing with me. It's not something that happened and ended. You know, like if you were involved in a in a in an awful um, natural disaster or something, it happened, and then after time goes by, it kind of gets further away. But this doesn't go away. This just stays with you. So once you awaken to it, which I think you and I woke up tons of people last uh, April, May, June, we were just waking up people left and right to this. And they were shifting. And, you know, it's an incredible thing how you have the power to sh make people shift and realize that that uh, their reality does shift. I mean, I think it's been going on all along. And when you but, say that, I think I think so, too. When you say that, you mean 2015. Is that right? Is that when you started? No, I started March 2016. March 2016. Now, see, I think I was looking at my stuff. And I was I I was starting around fifteen, I think. Yeah, probably September. Right, 15. but you but you know you and I were like we were like some of the first out there, and you know your videos like you kept you helped me keep going because I was like okay, and you helped me because I watched your stuff to like for a baseline of like okay, is this really happening? So like seriously, thank you because I was like I was looking at your stuff to go okay stuff like uh, sean indigo was another one that was out you know pretty early in the game right. yeah. and i'm like i was looking at your two more than anything and i'm like okay this is real like i'm not freaking crazy yeah same thing 
I mean, I, your videos were some of the first I found. I remember sitting there when I was just at that initial shock stage. I was somewhere. I don't remember. My son was with me. And, you know, he's the one who dropped this whole thing on me. He asked me a series of questions from a video he had seen. And he blew my mind. And I couldn't understand why I was getting all this stuff wrong. Anyway, one, I think we went out to dinner or something. And I was looking for videos. Uh, maybe we were waiting for my wife. I think she went somewhere, somewhere else. But anyway, we were sitting there in the car, and then I saw you there on sitting on your bed with the cat, and you were talking about all this reality shifting stuff. And my son was just, I don't know, it was just so crazy and weird that we were actually like sitting there listening to you say the things you were saying. But you know, that's. <laughs> You weren't like saying anything that's crazy now. I mean, it's just, it's, that's what it is. That's what it's been ever since then. It's just yeah, a crazy time. I, crazy time. And, and, and you become like, you become like more hyper aware. That's like the one thing that like, I've always like stayed with is like, after you see this, you're always looking. Even if you're trying not to look, it's like, there's a hyper awareness, this over like almost over sensory thing that happens. And you're just like always looking around like, okay, what's a reality shift? What's not a reality shift? I, I do a lot of driving. Yeah. I drive hours and hours daily. And so I'm constantly just scanning. It's so crazy. I mean, you'd feel, you'd think that it would drive you nuts, but it really doesn't because I'm so used to it. I'm like on the hunt. I'm like, all right, come on. Who, who's trying to, who's going to change on me today? I mean, it's just such a weird thing. It is. I'm bringing the chat room in here to see what everyone's saying here. Um, so you talk about how you believe this is an awakening. Yes. Yeah. I. This has always been a consciousness shift for me because that's what I was expecting starting in 2011. There's videos of me on YouTube talking about a coming shift in human consciousness. And so I was expecting this. And so when it hit me, I, initially, I immediately said, all right, here it is. My consciousness has shifted. Holy crap. I mean, this is really happening here. And I didn't know how it was going to happen, but I just knew there'd be some type of shift. And, you know, with the Mandela effect, I felt like all of a sudden I just became more aware of, you know, like meeting myself again, like the Incas, the uh, prophecies that they have from thousands of years ago. This is the time of meeting ourselves again which I feel like I'm doing. I'm meeting, I'm meeting the real me closer than I ever have before. And I think all of us are, um, and what we're capable of and what, you know, what this is all about. So definitely awakening. I don't at all lean towards the fact that this is Satan or, uh, the devil, you know, doing this. <laughs> I, just, I don't want to go along with that stuff at all. It's just, it's always been an awakening. However, I always like to point out that when you take a 17 mile tunnel underground and you slam subatomic particles together at the speed of light, I don't know what that does. So I, I, I never take away the fact that they could have something to do with what's going on because that just seems, you know, pretty high risk <laughs> doing that with our reality. So I don't know if they've done something. Um, I kind of feel like they have when some of these changes really make you think like, what's this change trying to tell me? Because some of these changes are really odd. The things that, you know, life was like a box of chocolates instead of is. I mean, there's, there's messages that coming through a lot of these. Well, there's definitely like a duality and a singularity. And a lot of these changes point towards the, the singularity. Um, they do. I noticed that last year. So I don't know. I feel like we're being talked to through a lot of the changes, but, and then the like, things like, that are changing. Would you say like are, an awakening code? Like there's some kind of code in all this? Yeah, it seems like there's a hidden message kind of, but I don't really spend a lot of time trying to figure that out because. That's a puzzle. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't see how anyone could figure that out at this point, but I'm wondering, I've, I'm always wondering when this is really going to take off. Because to me, it still really hasn't taken off. No, no, it hasn't. And the majority of people just kind of poo-poo it. They're like, yeah, whatever, whatever, Mandela, Mandela, you know. Mm -hmm. 
you know, your yeah, friends, like, hey, digging, and that's, yeah. and that's why now we have a, 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 you know, a dating site. I'll, I'll go ahead and plug it again. I'll, I'll be nice. I haven't even looked at it yet, but apparently there's a new dating site. That wait, affected love, if, affected love. Is that right? Affected love. <laughs> I mean, and we kind of need it right now because honestly, like relationships, as you were talking about, um, I'm glad you've been able to keep it together with your wife and your family. That's awesome. But I mean, my relationship has been compromised several times and it's, it's not easy. You know, I know that she has seen the things that I talk about shift, you know, even in our, the place where we share residence, you know, it's like, yeah, I mean, she's like, yeah, okay, well, you should know by now. She'll just say this to me. Well, you should you shouldn't be surprised anymore. You should know that this is how it works. Reality shifts. So what? Now do something with it. Right. She's always like, she's like, do something with it. Like this is this is how the matrix is. Then you know why aren't you incredibly wealthy with it? <laughs> <laughs> speaking to speaking to well, that. Well, maybe that's coming. I, I, mean, I mean, you know that that's the thing too. It's like how you know. Um, how, how can, like, I, I mean, to me, like, that's all awesome. Like, if you can find a way to shift your own reality in a way that's more abundant, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I think that this is really more about, you know, understanding more about who we are. Like, at the baseline, right. no matter what's happening, whether it's CERN, whether it's a natural phenomenon, a uh, shift in consciousness, an ascension, whatever it is, uh, you know, waking up in the dream, the lucid dream of life, Whatever it is, there's one fact that definitely I think most people can agree on, and that is we're seeing like a glimpse of the other side of the veil of how reality works. Because before, I mean, before I woke to this, life was kind of boring in some ways, but very linear, you know, linear. It wasn't, it wasn't this fluid. It's like this wasn't even a possibility. This is something you'd go to watch, you know, on a Saturday night at your local theater. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. I so, agree. so what are, what have been some of your biggest your biggest shifts for you personally? You're just like your biggest WTFs around this. Uh, Kit Kat is like what the one that just haunts me because I see it every time I'm checking out at the supermarket. I see it and it just bothers me. It kind of gives me a headache to see Kit Kat without a dash. I mean, that's that's a huge one. Um, I should just be able to ramble them off. I mean, I've done 206 boating videos. I mean, it seems like some of those videos I did over a year ago, I have to go back and look. I mean, there's just so many changes. I forget ones that I've covered. Um, let's see. Offhand, I mean... I don't know. There's so many. Uh, Penn's Oil. I managed an oil change place when I was like 20 years old, 21. And we sold Penn's Oil. It had one in. And it's always had two. That just looks totally odd. Jiffy is a huge one. I've done like five videos on Jiffy. I dig yeah. your Jiffy video, man. When you went to, you, did you call the restaurant or did you actually go there? You went there, didn't you? I went there and ate. Yeah, I took a you photo. You freaking of the, had, a, you had a Jiffy burger, didn't you? Yeah, it was so good. I mean, I never had a burger with peanut butter on it in my life, but I'm like, I got to try this. It was like right after the Mandela effect hit me. I just happened to be picking up my stepfather at the airport in Sacramento, and he says, let's go downtown um, Main Street or, you know, the main main area, main downtown, and there's uh, Fannie Ann's saloon. And and it, I don't know, something drew me, and he's like, you want to go over to Fannie Ann's? I'm like, yeah, that looks like a good place. And I walk over and I walk up to the menu on the outside and there was the little Jiffy dude, the little Jiffy cartoon. And I was, I was just blown away. And uh, so I asked them what, they, what kind of peanut butter they used. And the lady said Jiffy and then immediately corrected herself and said, oh, no, I, I think it's um, Skippy. <laughs> so she, she got confused like right away. And then after that, I came home, you've probably seen the video, but right, I called like three other restaurants on the phone and two of them said they use Jiffy. And then another one said, uh, oh no, it's Skippy, uh, Chunky Skippy or something. He's like, we like that better, but obviously it started with Jiffy, he told me. And so, I don't, it's just so bizarre. These, And I asked one girl, I said, well, why would you call it a famous Jiffy burger if 
uh, you don't use Jiffy on it. And she's like, oh, well, people associate, uh, you know, peanut butter with Jiffy, sir. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> it, uh, Jiffy is really crazy. Wow. So did you, did you, I'm going to pull up some images here. I'm just, I'm, I'm curious what's under Jiffy Burger on Google right now. So I'm just going to throw up the images right now. So did you speak when you were there? Did you speak to him about this whole thing? No, about I wish I would have. Uh, my stepfather wasn't really in on the whole thing. I mean, he didn't, wasn't really interested because I had mentioned the Mandel effect to him and he kind of blew it off. So I didn't want to like get all into it there at the restaurant. Right. So I didn't, so I didn't. But um, I made sure to ask them, you know, when I was away from him. And I didn't, like, carry on about it and try and explain to them. And I don't know. I didn't want to get into it. I was just so blown away that, about the cartoon out on the menu. I, I just couldn't believe it. That's what I'm looking for right now. I'm going through those. There's actually a restaurant called Jiffy Burger, but I'm not sure if it's actually talking about the peanut butter here. No, I don't think that they have – that. Yeah, I don't think that's associated with peanut butter. I don't think it's. Oh, there you go. There it is, and yeah, that's probably connected. There he to is. That's from the menu. I took a photo of that when I was there. That's just that so might be my photo. That, that might, might be, be your photo. photo. Yeah, I think it is. That that's just crazy, though. I mean, look at that thing. Are you freaking? That's how kidding? I remember it. <laughs> that is how I remember it too. My mom remembers buying Jiffy peanut butter, and that's another good thing that I'm able to talk to my mother at least about all this because I can't talk to my father and my brother, but. Uh, my mom, she shares a lot of my memories. I, I call her up and question her. I, I, I give her songs and put a blank in where the words changed, and she gives me the old word, J just right on cue. I mean, I can check this stuff with her because I know she's going to give me the right, you know, my old memory. She's going to confirm it for me, and almost right. like 90% of the time she does. But uh, she's not real great with maps and stuff so i can't really talk to her about the geographical changes or like the anatomy ones but pop culture stuff or things she watched when she was younger you know say in the 80s and stuff 70s 80s like a big one for her is is sally fields but not only sally fields also you like me you really like me i mean she's known that since it happened she probably watched it live in 1984 right and so when i played it for her, she had this weird look on her face when I played it, and it said, you like me right now, you like me. She's like, what? That's not what it is. And I'm like, yes, this is the actual footage, Mom. This is what it always, this is the famous quote. <laughs> she was just so puzzled. It was crazy. Yeah, it's, it's, it's wild. I mean, I think I remember the story, how it went down with Rachel, is that when she had the date with, uh, you know, Sally Field's ex-husband, like, he's like, no, that's not what it is. And he actually went and looked at the footage. If I'm remembering right, when she was hanging out with this guy, he went and looked at the footage. Like, no, that can't be. I think that's how I remember it. I might be wrong, but I feel like that's the way the story went down. Well, she so, sent me a message saying that he had called uh, Sally Field's son, I think. And he says, yeah, mom, mom knows about that. And uh, rather than trying to correct everybody, she just lets it go or something. It just doesn't make sense. It's almost like, like what, do you, what do you think about the theory that we, we, there's just different versions of ourselves in this multi, let's say we, we are living yeah. in a multiverse. Yeah. What do you I'm, think? I've kind of just in the last few years, I've gotten into that camp that there's like an infinite number of us. I mean, I understand it's hard to imagine but I, I don't I, I don't know, well, you must not have heard, but in a recent video, I talked about how sometimes, like when I'm making a decision, the decision I don't make, it, a glimpse of it plays out in my mind. Oh my God, me too. And this is something new. I don't ever remember this happening before. It was something this year that just happened like two, three times, kind of in the last few months. Right. Where like, I remember last week I got on, I was on the bed. And I had to get ready to go. I had to go take a shower. And I'm laying there looking at my phone. And I said, all right, I got to get up. I got to go in the shower. And I'm like, nah, five more minutes. And then like, so I decided not to go. But then I have an image of me getting up off the bed, walking down the hall and, and going towards the shower. It just seems a little different than any, you know, I don't usually do that. So I don't know if it's me, my imagination just kind of running wild because of this whole thing. or <laughs> Right there's something to it I, I don't know i'm not trying to say that i'm like seeing that other choice play out but it seems like it kind of what do you what so what do you think about like the possibility that we we're always shifting 
maybe ever so slow. See, I, lately I've been thinking about this. Maybe we're always shifting in between different timelines or dimensions or whatever you want to call it. And but it's so subtle that we don't see it. And maybe it's like because when I was talking about this earlier, it was like our actions, our thoughts, our deeds. Basically, heaven and hell's right here. So whatever you're doing is is creating this vibration which you align with all the time. And there's all these different well game boards, and you're basically moving between like let's just call it game boards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we're constantly shifting. I did a live hangout uh, with uh, Cynthia Sue Larson, and she's been writing books on this for like 20 years. And so it was interesting to talk to her because she was all excited. Now everyone's waking up to this. She had 20 years she's been talking about how we're constantly shifting. I know. I just I actually was just on email with her today. She's going to be on uh, on the show soon on, on my channel. So I'm excited about that. That's awesome. I'll have to go back and listen to your your cast with her. Yeah, that well, I was on uh, uh, Karen Lupo's channel with her. On the, oh, okay, uh, yeah. Chats I did on his channel. Right. Uh, a while back. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. There, so, yeah, I really enjoyed talking to her because she's a wealth of information on the whole reality shifting. <laughs> Imagine, you know, back in the early '90s when who did she have to talk to? About that, that's a brave lady. Oh my God. Yeah, because she must have, and it, she's a. Um, physicists from berkeley so imagine oh, no 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 are you freaking kidding me yeah oh yeah, no her background is in science oh my god i just got chills really that no i didn't know that yes so she has the quantum physics background so oh. that, and she's been writing books about this reality shifting for 20 years now that's a wealth of information Easy. I, I oh, wow because you know i've got this friend that's so skeptic man he's like in fact i'm gonna have him on my show he's like a, he's like my best friend but you know at first he was like oh of course it was brags da, 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 da. you know and he's just like going off because like you know we're, we live in a healthy community and we're always buying that kind of stuff and then like he kind of backtracks you know i don't have a very good memory and i'm like well dude that's why i can't talk to you about this and all he can come up with is like well bring me a physicist bring me a scientist get, get, where, what are the experts saying <laughs> <laughs> he's you know he's from that right brain reality yeah yeah and you're already dealing with somebody who doesn't have a good memory and he admits it and i'm like well dude i can't talk to you about this then because it's just it frustrates both of us you know a physicist on that knows this thing's real i mean i just i can't wow i didn't know that about cynthia that's amazing mm -hmm. yeah i believe she's she uh studied quantum physics for years at berkeley i mean she knows all about quantum physics and so you know i've been looking more into it i've i've been studying quantum physics off and on for years i mean i was reading books on the universe and and stuff about quarks and different subatomic particles i mean i was interested in that 20 years ago myself but i don't claim to you know i've seen this stuff recently about the double slit experiment and all that stuff i mean i look at it and to me everything's you know everything's quantum we live in a quantum universe no doubt about it at so, this point yeah no everything's doubt. everything's vibrating like the string theory you know everything like the desk i'm sitting at it's just like vibrating right here <laughs> i mean you can't see it or you can't tell but it is because atoms are in motion and it, the whole desk is moving it's made of atoms i mean if you zero, get down and start thinking about it it's uh you know like the whole hol holographic universe thing it all makes sense okay now what about okay so holographic universe simulation i mean is this a simulation of sorts what do you yeah, think i don't i don't know on the simulation thing i see lots of people pointing that out there's definitely something going on with the sun uh the white sun we have now is not the sun i grew up with now there's people saying it's a simulation well, i don't know if it is or not but there's certain the things don't seem right and today when we left i pointed out the chemtrails and my wife was like she just looks up and she doesn't have much to say because i don't know what she thinks i mean i'm like D do you see this cloud here like right above like straight line above our house it's really low i'm like those aren't ice crystals and then i showed her different clouds it was misty all over there were not a single cloud in the sky it was all had come from those lines that get come from an airplane i mean it come down like just i don't know like it's like couple hundred yards up I mean, these aren't ice crystals it's not condensation i mean i've been looking at that stuff for a long i don't know there's so much going on there's just so much we're not being told the truth about stuff now 
I don't know why. I mean, they're trying to block out sun rays. I know the government's admitted geoengineering, uh, stratospheric aerosol injections. So I know they've admitted to it. So, but why? I mean, I, it's not. Um, I've even heard meteorologists on television. They'll say, you know, talk about the chem. They'll mention chemtrails. They talk wow. about them. So there's some clips on YouTube where they mention chemtrails. They don't say contrails. They say chemtrails because. Uh, I don't know. It's just I have people that are um, in the science field, and they're just saying that you you know you're just a conspiracy nut, and there's nothing going on. There's uh, that's condensation. I'm like, okay, yeah, I know condensation ice crystals at thirty thousand feet, but this is like right. These planes aren't very high, and I don't think they're all government planes. They don't have markings on them, so I don't know. I kind of got off on a tangent, but yeah, I mean, hey, I grew up around the aerospace industry, and I I know when I was growing up as a kid, never saw anything like that. The only the only thing I saw going through the skies was condensation. Those trails would go away. Do you think this is linked to anything? Uh, I mean, what do you think it is? I, mean, I had you... one guy tell me that that's why the Mandela effect is happening. Some people <laughs> because so that. many so many years of the spraying aluminum and strontium and barium. What it's they got so it might be changing our quantum field. Maybe. I don't know what the hell they're doing. Terraforming whatever they're doing, the whoever is doing it, it, it's, it has to be affecting them as well. Right. Right. So I don't agree with these people who say they're trying to kill us and all that. I don't think that's what it is. I don't think they, I mean, I'm not going to say that. I don't know what they can do. But I, but I, look, I don't, with one thing this freaking phenomenon has proven to a lot of us, not everybody, but a lot of us, is death is not what we were taught. I mean, look, there's so, I mean, Fats Domino just died again. What the, <laughs> there's no Fats way. That Domino. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I've never done a single video on the dying. The big one for me is uh, Gomer Pyle. I remember being in my car one day and hearing on the radio, Gomer Pyle's dead. What's his name? I can't think of it right now. Uh, me too. Yeah. Um, um, uh, Jim Neighbors. Neighbors. Yeah. I heard that, uh, that he died. It was like a long time ago. It was like, I, know. I don't know, seven, eight years ago. I know. He's still alive. That blew me away when I found out he was alive because I remember hearing Gomer Pyle die. But as far as all the others, I, I'm not sure. That's one thing I'm not real. Because there's, you know why? I, I, there's so many death hoaxes on the internet and stuff. Right. So, you know, there was a death hoax for Sally Fields. And people were saying that Sally Fields was dead. And I'm like, what? And so, I, you know, it turned out to be a hoax. Right, so I right. don't know. There's all these hoaxes. So I never really, I try to keep my channel as legitimate and real as I can. And I just laugh at the people that say I'm making this up. There was a comment today on my Lost in Space, Danger, Will Robinson, Danger. The yeah. guy says, you're, you're now scraping the barrel, bottom of the barrel, doing effects that actually was said once in the, you know, on the show, but not as many times as you recall. I mean, basically, he's like, this is a joke, dude. I mean, you're, you're taking your deception to a new level. And I'm like, dude, my deception, I couldn't make this shit up in a million years. Man. I know, I know. All this stuff I talk about, how can I make it all up? It just blows my mind. And, and, you know, and you know, the other thing about this, money bags, is that would we really waste all our time? Look, for me, I've never mon monetized my channel and i haven't been able to because my channel's locked up in some bs but and it's kind of a bummer because otherwise you know it would be it would be i'd probably be on here more even i'd probably make more of a vocation out of it well yeah because but, it, like, you, time but, is money i mean we all have to pay bills right and if you make so, you make a couple hundred bucks you know a couple hundred dollars a month uh you know doing youtube videos or whatever it is awesome i i i know what the average you know, people make making you know consistent Mandela effect videos. It's not that much, you guys. You can yeah, buy some it's like groceries. Like a few hundred bucks. Yeah, you can yeah. buy some groceries every month. But I, <laughs> but, but I haven't. Bucks. I haven't even been doing that, you guys. Yeah, I do have so a for you, I know you don't make anything. So I, it, this is, has to be. This can't be something you're just making up. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like, why you would a lot all of these time people? On this. Yeah. Why would all these people? It's because there's a passion behind it. It's because. Yeah. You know, this is like the most incredible thing you've ever experienced. For me, like I used to, I mean, I still do love the freaking Twilight Zone. You know, the Twilight Zone that was created by Rod Sterling. You know, that one. Mm -hmm. This is kind of cool. I mean, honestly, because like I'm in the Twilight Zone. We are all, all of us that are like seeing this, 
this is like the, one of the most amazing Twilight Zones you could ever be a part of. Wow. Yeah, this is incredible. It is. It's uh, it's just. I never, I never imagined this in a million years, and it's a process. We're going through a process, so to me, it's an awakening. And so, uh, yeah, and so uh, Andrew here in the chat room says, "I think those who don't see this stuff are under a spell." What do you think about the people that don't see it? What do you think about that? Um, I see them as more closed-minded people. Um, although. Maybe for whatever reason, they're just not being, a, they have not been able to become aware of their reality shifts. I don't, um, I don't know, maybe they're too, too uh, left brain or right brain. Right. Hey, uh, I just want to make a, a quick uh, comment here. Sister in Christ, thank you so much for like, confirming that you don't remember cruise ships in San Diego. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, it's so interesting because a lot of my close friends, my community is like, oh, there's always been cruise ships there. You know, I, I don't usually post stuff on my personal Facebook page about the phenomenon. I've learned it's just not even worth my time to do so because most people just, it's like crickets. You know, it's just cricket, cricket, cricket. I don't either. I've done yeah. it a few times and they just maybe one or two comments, like one, two thumb up. I mean, I have like 200 friends. So I get like one thumb up or something. Like right. Nobody, they don't even understand. Yeah, and the, the only and the only person that I would get like, you know, any kind of Facebook love from would be people that, you know, are affected, that understand this is a real phenomenon. I don't want to use the word affected. It sounds bad. Okay, you're affected. But I mean, that see, that are awake to this. And yeah, I mean, it's, um... <laughs> oh, wait, I've got another one. No cruise ships in San Diego. Never. Thank you again. Wow, I got two. See, that's awesome. Yeah, I have no and, idea on that. And, and you guys, and that's the thing, money bags. It takes a lot of effing balls. Now, here's the bottom line. Like, you know, for what you've been doing, what, you know, a lot of people that, that you know, guys, you're just basically putting your sanity on the line. You're saying, hey, this wasn't a part of my reality. And a lot of people are just going to, you know, throw you the crazy card. And what we've learned, I think, if you, let's see if you agree with this, is that there is people here, like, for instance, Marilyn Monroe, something I talked about recently. I distinctly remember her dying in a hotel room. Same here. You too. Yep. And then, and then others are be like, "Well, what's this house? I never knew about a house in in Brentwood." You know, it's like, and, and then some people say, "Oh, it's always she always died in her home." What are you talking about? No, for me, until last week, I had never seen that home, and I spent a lot of time looking at Marilyn Monroe stuff because one of my friends was really into her, and we talked about her, so it got me interested. And I'm, I mean, I'm talking when the internet first started, I was researching her so yeah it's really strange because so i so would you agree how many realities do you think are here and do you think there's a merging of different timelines or realities what do you think about that yeah there's at least a merging of three if not four that, yeah that, three or four that's I what think i think that too. we're being made aware of for whatever reason right and but i think so that, um well i think we're constantly shifting through an infinite number but for whatever reason this main principle timeline we've been on it seems that's where all the reality residue comes from because there's overlapping going on it's not just uh this or that it's um you know like cheese it's and my son remembers cheese it's itz i remember its and it's always been it so you got those three and it would seem to be three but now sometimes i think it seems to be four recently i noticed some things but it was always three last year like with Jiffy, I can't tell you how many people say there was never Jiffy. You're thinking of cornbread or an oil change. It was always Jiff, J-I-F-F. -F. And I'm like, really? You're going to correct me and put two Fs in, in your correction? Telling me it was always J-I-F-F? -F? It right. wasn't that either. So, And that kind of it seems familiar to me a little bit. So it's like there's three different ones there with Jiffy. Wow. So, okay. So that's, so one of my, one of the things that I really want, you know, everyone to really take more to heart is that when you're leaving comments on Mandela effect videos and you're like, oh, this is the way it was, or this is the way it was. And well, okay, let's add something to that. This is the way it was for me. This is the way I experienced it. Absoluteness here, you guys, you know, it's like the bottom, right? Yep. 
<laughs> because we yeah, got I, I laugh at people that say, well, I'm a person of facts. Well, what's a fact when something people say they remember Jiffy, but it's always been J-I-F. And I think Smuckers took out a patent on Jiffy, like back in the 40s. I mean, that was, they didn't use it. I mean, it's just, there's no fact. There's no, I don't know. It's hard to say there's no facts. I mean, I'd like to think there were, but with a lot of this stuff, what's the fact? Fact of the matter. I mean, I don't, I don't know. If the reality can shift, then what the hell is a fact? I know. I know. And history. Obviously, history is, you know, changing. I mean, it's like our history is quite a bit different in so many ways now. Yeah, I don't ever remember hearing about that uh, Black Tom Island, that explosion. Right, no way. The, the Statue of Liberty. Yeah, I remember no way. Remember when 9 11 happened? It was all about the second terrorist, big giant terrorist act on our homeland. The second one, the first one being Pearl Harbor. Okay, well, what about that? I mean, that was the German spies blowing up some bomb on the East Coast. I mean, how come I never heard about that? That's a big deal. I mean, they said that it shattered. Down Manhattan is, you know, in Manhattan down oh, Fifth Avenue, oh, one of the main streets there shattered all the glass in the shops. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff like that, you know. What, what about like, you know, just like uh, Jay Glow here is saying in the chat room, we used to be on the Sagittarian arm in the freaking universe. Now, no matter what, it's a, you know, it's a narrative, it's a story, you know, for a lot of people, we don't know really where, where we are, no matter what you believe. I know there's a lot of different beliefs about what this construct is. But yeah, that's what I grew up knowing is that we were on the Sagittarius arm. You've got, you know, Neil deGrasse Tyson in that video saying, yeah, we're on the Sagittarius arm. And now we're on the Orion Spur. How can the majority, the masses not go, how did we get here all of a sudden? Yeah. You're no longer here. You know, those like those freaking memes online where it says you are here. Yeah. Well, now no, now I, I look at them. I'm like, no, you are no longer here. You're somewhere else. Okay. My thing with that is Orion and the Big Dipper are still where I always remember them my whole life because I always look up at the stars. Yes. So if I'm in a whole different place, it seems like those should be in a different place in my mind. Oh, of course. And that's why I think we're in the freaking matrix. And the narrative has changed. The story has changed. But the construct hasn't. Yeah, Somewhat. I mean, obviously, there's been some real changes in the construct. Yeah, I don't think we're physically in a different place because the no. stars should look different to me. I agree. I agree. Yeah, well, we're, yeah, we're not. Right. We're, I remember, like, like I heard, I saw the Tyson thing and the other guy, Sagan. Both of them say Sagittarius, and they should, you know, that's their livelihood. They should know what they're talking about. Right. And so, and so, what wrong. do you? So, what do you think? I, I know that you're now a newspapers.com fan, like I am. What do you think about the reality residue? Why doesn't it change in the newspapers? Is it because it's not digital? I mean, it isn't a sort, but it's but because it's like, I mean, actually, I some of that, that as actual reality residue, as not a residue of an old reality, residue of these other realities, like crossing over of three. I mean, I see that as um, as real articles. Because, you know, there's so many of these of the old spellings found in these articles, like Jeopardy. What's the deal? You've seen the stuff with Jeopardy recently? Yeah, that's, that's great stuff, man. What's the deal with Jeopardy? I mean, Jeopardy has so many of our, I got to do an update video because I had so many comments. People went and did their own little research. I didn't have a lot of time. They've dug up tons of stuff. There's tons of comments on my Jeopardy video that people dug up things that are of our old memories. So that sort of feels like, I don't know. It feels like Jeopardy was stuck in that other reality with us. I don't yeah, know. And what about, it goes so many different directions. It's, you can't pinpoint this stuff down. Oh my gosh. It's, it's so crazy. I mean, and like people were talking about the moon here in the chat room about the moon rotating 90 degrees. I mean, the moon's been doing all kinds of different things. We can talk about the sun too, but the moon, it's like looking like the cat from the, you know, from uh, Alice in Wonderland. I mean, the smile moon. I mean, this year was the first time I ever saw a moon smiling. There's that, that face, like the cat in, you know, Alice in Wonderland. Mm -hmm. And like, no, and people are just going to, uh, you know, 
along their nightly, you know, routines and they don't see the, the freaking moon smiling. <laughs> no, oh, I look at the moon. It looks a little, I, it seemed like it looked different to me, but I, I don't have the image of, of the pattern on it ingrained in my brain. So, but if it was smiling, I think I would have noticed that, but you're saying it's done that all year for you. Well, off and on, you know, it's like you, you occasionally you'll like see a crescent, the crescent, it's the crescent. So the crescent looks like a freaking Alice in Wonderland cat. Oh, I'm talking of like the crater design. When oh, no, no, I'm talking. Yeah, no, I'm actually talking about just the, the crescent. I mean, I've never seen a crescent that looks like a smiley face. And it literally like straight up and down smiley face from, you know, Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> hmm. And then no, and when... And, I'll have and, it, for that. and money bags, do you remember that? Do you remember our yellow sun in the sky? Yeah, I mentioned that already. I don't. The white sun looks really odd to me. Yeah, I grew up with the yellow sun. Yeah, I mean, you know, that could have shifted a long time ago, but maybe it's because you know when you don't know that, that that's, when you can't when you don't believe this stuff is even possible, you can't see it. I think that's part of it. Like a lot of people may never notice that the you know the sun changed colors, but is there's nothing like out of anything I've posted on my channel, there's nothing that gets more people interested in than the color of the sun. Every time I talk about the sun changing colors, the hits just hit. I mean, I'm like, wow, people are, people are, have really noticed this. Yeah, I mean, it's well, that's the, what's been going on here for a couple of years. They don't notice it till you point it out. I'm sure you've noticed that when you ask someone something and then they're like, oh, wow, it was just the other way last week. Right. You, sh you make them shift at that moment. It's, it's, you know, it's true. I mean, that's such a strange part of this phenomenon. It's like it's happened to me when someone's pointed something out and I've heard something a certain way or, you know, maybe music or something. And they'll turn around and say, I mean, look, you guys, it happened to me today a little bit. I mean, I was like when uh, Brian McFarland, when he was like, oh, the Go-Go's, you know, now it says... Uh, uh they instead of we and then i went and, uh the um what's that song called again um yeah i went and looked that up i saw you talking about it. i went and looked it up they say they in the beginning and then the end of it's all we and, and i think that's the way it's always been yeah. um For i'm me. drawing a blank on the song again what's well, it called again um i can't think of the name of it i don't know why i'm it's drawing just, a blank i just and well, anyway, you know, my memory is kind of, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's why that's, that's why this is happening. Yeah. It's all memories, but no, but that, but that was like for a moment, I thought I went through the video and I was like, oh my God, this is a golden egg because if this thing changed and it's still got the title of the song there, our, our lips are sealed. Yeah, there it is. Is that what it was? No, 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 not that. no, 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 the, the village people, it's got, we want you on the cover of the album, greatest hits. And it's all about they want you. That's strange. Right. You ever heard that one? No, I think I, I came across In the Navy? You. In right, the Navy. Right. They want right. you. They want you as a new recruit. I remember we want you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we got the beat. Thank you. I don't know why I yeah, couldn't think of it. Yeah, we got the beat. Right. Yeah, we got the beat. Um, yeah, for sure. And so, and so for a moment there, I was like, I was excited, man. Like, I, I, I was like, oh, my God. I if this that is excitement. <laughs> no, no, no. I was like, this is like, nobody could deny it. No, at that point, if that thing had shifted all the way over today, the whole song. But then I was like, I had to, like, when I went back and listened to it, I'm like, I almost felt like there was a moment when I'm like, okay, did I actually hear the whole, when I, didn't I go through the whole song and listen to it? And I kept hearing they, but then I had to question myself. Cause once I was driving in my car and I'm like playing it again on my way to the studio to like freaking like do a video about it. And I'm like, well, I'm not sure now. And then I'm like, yeah, but then I was like, no, no, this was the way it was because it made sense. The first part was they, and then it was we, but that's, I've never had a flip flop. Have, have you had any flip flops? I have never really had a flip flop. That seems to be a big topic in the community. Right. I don't, uh, like Flintstones and tidy cats and all that stuff. Flip flopping. Only one that I thought that kind of tricked me a little bit was the uh, Apollo 13. Uh, Houston, we have a problem. It seemed like I had looked up something and it said, Houston, we have a problem, which is what I always remembered as. And then I went and listened to something that said we had a problem. And then someone had mentioned, hey, this changed back. And I went and looked. And so it was kind of confusing. 
I sort of feel like it might have changed for me, but I don't know. That's like the only one. Uh, right. The flip flops. Have you seen that video? Of the guy's bedroom. Yeah, that's fake. <laughs> I, I know. Hey, it's it's like the X Files. I want to believe, but no, it's it's fake. You you hundred percent sure? What would 100% it look like sure. if it was real? hundred percent sure. I mean, the guy is a really good editor, he, although he's not that good. They were talking well, about on on I mean, just the book one because he walks in the room and the no, e, the no e somebody changes to an e on the top of the book and the bottom of the book. I, I, I know at the same time. I, I know, but 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 somebody I can't I can't find the video. I was looking for it, but somebody did uh, a video showing someone who really knows about that type of editing. And I saw the, that debunking video. Yeah. Yeah. So no, that's not real and plus plus the rest of his stuff like the stuff he did on the same video was fake they proved it but when i first saw it it was pretty convincing to me too but see here's the thing i think that something like that's possible hey look there's been people that have seen things shift in real time so absolutely right, right. yeah hey brian so, yeah i don't know about the um that what is that the portals of sedona <laughs> that shit was like oh come on really <laughs> Yeah, the yeah. portal opening up to Sedona in his bedroom. That was crazy. Right. right. But the the book changing uh, was pretty convincing. And I think that's possible. So I don't oh, know. I, it would it, look, we want to believe, like like the X Files. I, I totally agree. Have you seen anything like as far as like I have? You know, I'm the guy who sees buildings and hotels pop into reality. And apparently now cruise ships show up in his city where they were never there before. Have you seen anything like that? No. You've yeah, yeah. You blew me away with that whole hotel thing, and then you went there like in the middle of the night, and that was so bizarre. I'm like, because I think that's possible too. But I haven't experienced that where something just pops up, just totally, hundred percent. I knew was not there. I haven't had that happen. Yeah. But I mean, with quantum physics, anything behind you, you don't know what's behind you. I know. <laughs> what, it's only if, if there's no one observing what's behind you, you don't know what's going on there. So it's imagine weird. like driving down the street and as you're driving, all these things are like changing. And then you'd look back and you're like, well, I didn't just pass that building. <laughs> that would be so <laughs> insane. <laughs> it, it, it is. Hey, look, the night that I saw the cruise ship in the port of San Diego, it, look, the hotel was one thing. And the, and the mobile homes disappearing in Carlsbad, California on Carlsbad Boulevard on, you know, by the ocean on there on the 101. Uh -huh. That was something because I know that those mobile homes were there. And then all of a sudden I'm like, okay, what, what's this hotel? And like, when, where do these mobile homes come from? And that's when, or, or when, where did the mobile homes go? And where these multi-million dollar homes, when did these get here? And in this timeline, those, that, that mobile home, those mobile homes were never there. And even some of my friends in the community that I, I'm part of, they remember, I've actually quizzed a few people that I know, you know, and they're like, that live around here. And they're like, yeah, those mobile homes were there. I remember what you were talking about. They didn't tear them down. They were like, huh, what? And I'm like, yeah, because we used to think, that these mobile homes are on lockdown. These senior citizens got it made. They're never taking, and it was a long stretch of white mobile homes, man. They had it on lockdown. They were stoked. And now there's these multi-million multi, multi -million dollar homes that have been there since 2003. And before that, there wasn't any development there, which is bizarre because, but, but then the cruise ship, I mean, look, you know, I'm with my gr girlfriend and we just got done having a nice meal. And I was going over to check out the Bob Hope Memorial. Because I'm like, what? you know, I could have missed it, I guess. And when I went over there, I recognized later, even though I've got a, got some other people saying that they used to be on the uh, USS Midway doing entertainment. They were like singers, performers, and they would have, and they, and they knew Bob Hope's wife personally. Mm -hmm. And they said when she was still alive, because I guess that was implemented in, I don't know, I feel like 19, it's when she was still alive. And she's like, they're like, no, no, we would have known about that memorial. We would have been invited to the ceremony. Did not exist for us. There's no way. But when I went over there, I'm like, okay, so that's what I was doing. I was going over there to investigate that. And my girlfriend was being kind. She let me get out of the car and go look. And I'm like, yeah, I guess I could have missed it because it's behind some bushes and whatever, whatever. And, but, it, but walking around that Bob Hope Memorial in San Diego, you guys, if you ever get a chance, an eerie thing you know bob hopes and it was like a, a loudspeaker of him talking to the troops and you know he's doing his comic bit with them and whether it's a reality shift or not it is crazy like just it feels like the twilight zone walking around those statues there's like there's a grip of them and anyway so thanks for the memory sign 
Yeah, yeah, and, and it's got thanks for the memory sign. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, it's that, that's that's one of the ones that really got me. I'm like, it was thanks for the memories, and it's trippy as you would imagine, right? You guys, it's trippy that that one got affected because this is all about our memories, mm -hmm, and right. and now it's it switched that song switched to thanks to the memory. What's what's really bizarre is hearing Frank Sinatra say memory, you know, as he sings a cover of it. To hear him say was, memory, yeah, to hear him say memory, right? I just would expect him to say memories. Yeah. They all say memory. Dean Martin, I think, says memory. They all say memory. They all say memory now. Been. But but it, it's crazy. I even found reality residue in newspapers.com of the freaking lyrics. The all the full on lyrics, man. Yeah, it's me like too. Yeah, I did a video on that. Yeah. Oh, you you found the same page. I'm yeah. like, that's crazy. So um, little statues, little thanks for the memories. Right, all the statues. You, by the way, I still want to order one of the statues and, and actually, I mean, one of the ornaments, the Christmas ornaments. I want to see what it says. I guarantee it's going to say memory, but, you know, it's, or or maybe not. I mean, who knows? If it's analog, because it's just like my, it's just like that, uh, the Star Wars Darth Vader Christmas or mm -hmm. ornament. It still says, Luke, I am your father. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen that. Crazy. So, yeah, you guys, I am going to, I'm going to order that ornament. For Christmas, that's my Christmas so, gift to myself. Something I wanted to point out was um, the stoplight video you did, you did. Yes. How well was that received when you first uploaded it? Okay, so you mean the most agreement? You mean the most recent one or the one I first did like years ago? No, the one you did like uh, a year plus ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, it wasn't it wasn't received that there was definitely people. People that remember green on top, but they, I think a lot of people were afraid even to say they remember green on top. Really? I think so. Yeah. I kind of got that. Like, and over time, and, or, I, or it was kind of like you were, you, you I didn't tell your story. No, I didn't experience it at that time. I watched your video and I'm like, eh, yeah, this is not really a effect for me. That was kind of my feeling when you came up with, when you put that video out. And then, I don't remember how long afterwards, four or five months later, I was sitting at a stoplight. It was late at night. There were no cars and there was just a stream of stoplights, like 10 of them, just 10 blocks. I was in a downtown area, 10 of them. And I looked at all of them and I just got this overwhelming feeling. I'm like, holy shit, those are all upside down. And then I, I just had a strong memory of like, oh my gosh. I remember the green on top. It hit me like a ton of bricks. <laughs> I was sitting there, and then now, ever since that moment, you know, I just just kind of smile at them now because I remember them being in a different order. But when you came out with that video, it didn't affect me. I, I was like, nah, this is not really affect for me. This is I'm not affected by this one. And that's how it happens. Sometimes things yeah. just hit you later. Mm -hmm. And, and so, and so I, the things I'm haunted about, like every day I go outside and you get in my car, whatever, it's the, it's just the traffic lights. And I want to hear what yours are. It's the traffic lights. It's the American flag. Cause the red, for me, the red stripe used to be under, you know, the red, the, the blue box. Right. Yeah. I don't recall that. Oh, I do. I don't, I don't recall what, whether it was red or white under the blue box. Right. Right. Um, and what else? But yeah. So, if, that, if you knew it was red and it switched to white, yeah, that would be odd, but I don't recall that. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's so subtle. It's one of those ones that, uh, you know, you just, if you didn't really like look at it, you wouldn't, you wouldn't notice if you even, if you were from that timeline. But you saw the video, the clip of Star Trek, I think it was, where they found a piece of a oh yeah ship with like the American flag on it. Oh yeah, something. absolutely. And that, and that, I've had it in some of my videos, that patch that's on that guy's uniform, that is from my no, I time. I mean on the side of like a piece of metal. Like and it's and it is ship. yeah from the spaceship right from I think it's like space shuttle or whatever is space shuttle or just the space enterprise shuttle, something like that yeah you, you yeah. saw that okay right and so and so that is the flag that's my flag from where I when I grew up and yeah and 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 so yeah I mean fifty two stars that represented fifty two states that's what's on that patch and the red is underneath the blue box mm -hmm. yeah I have a, a faint memory of like fifty two as not sounding incorrect. 51 sounds wrong, 53 sound wrong. I know it's 50, but 52 for some reason kind of brings me back to the 80s. 
mm-hmm, mm-hmm. as a memory from that time frame as like not sounding so wrong. I can't just come out and say it was 52, 100%. That's what it was. I have right. no doubt. I can't say that, but right. it sounds familiar. <laughs> it's kind of a weird thing because some of these you have double memory. Right. And the consensus, by the way, because everyone's like, okay, what are the other two states? And the consensus has been, and it does match my memory, um, has been Puerto Rico, not just a territory, but a state, and Washington, T- Washington D.C., not just a territory, but a state. Yeah. I don't remember Puerto Rico ever being a state. Right. Do you actually remember it being a state? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Th- those, were the two, those were the two. And they weren't just territories, because now they're just territories. But yeah. they were, it was, it, for me, it was Washington, D.C. Because I always thought it was strange. I used to, you know, talk to people in school about it when I was like in, you know, elementary or whatever school. And like when we were learning about this, I'm like, that seems strange for that era. For, and it's, oh, it's because it's, you know, Washington, D.C. and all the politics. And so they made it a state. So I totally remember that. And then Puerto Rico, I, I had some help from somebody else to help me jog my memory on that one. Do you remember? Have you heard about the people saying that, that Cincinnati was a state? I have not heard that till this moment. And <laughs> yeah, I there, there's 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 no residue yeah, on it that I can find. Sound, I don't know. It didn't sound like real weird when you said it. Right. Like it could like I could have had a memory of that, but I don't know. I don't really remember it, but it doesn't sound that odd to me for some reason. Right. Wow. So, so let me just finish real quick. So, so the, about the, so I was talking about the Bob Hope Memorial and stuff. So I had gone over there cause it's, you know, that's where it's at. It's in the Harbor of San Diego. And so I'd got done looking at it and we're driving down, you know, Harbor Boulevard there in San Diego. And I look over and I'm like, it hit me like talking about the hotels that I've seen shift my reality. When I saw that cruise ship, I, it, I don't know, man. It was like seeing a freaking ghost. I'm like, there is no way. I've always thought it would be cool. It'd be cool if we had cruise ships and that we could take, you know, a cruise ship out of the port. What do you have? Yeah. Military? Because San Diego's a military base, right? It was, yeah, it was just military and, and small, like little cruise ships. You'd go around the harbor and, you know, people's personal boats. And there was never any massive cruise ships in the, in the freaking harbor ever. And when I sort of look at the image now, they've been in there for 20, 30 years or something. Yeah. 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 It's been, it's been happening since the eighties on this timeline now where I'm at now. (laughs) And I'm like, you've lived there for a long time. Oh yeah. 20 years. There's no way. And and I've had, Oh no, no, no. Just, it just, it just didn't happen, but it happened for many other people, obviously. So that's where the, the, the dual timelines, the multiple timelines come in and multiple realities because you know, I have friends that work downtown that have lived downtown that have never seen them there. And like when I pointed it out to them, they're like, oh my God, one of my friends is like, oh my God, I'm excited. Me, my boyfriend are going to go on a cruise. Like it didn't exist before, but I'm not, I'm not bummed about it. We're going to go on a cruise. And it's so, you know, it's just so crazy because like that, that is still, <laughs> I had to like kind of let go of it right now, but I'm like, that one got me good, you know? And then I've got people posted on my, as I was saying, I, was, I posted about this on my personal Facebook page. And, you know, there was a couple people that gave me the, like, you know, the, the shocked little icon on Facebook, like, oh my God. So there was some people that were like doing the, oh my God thing about it. Cause they were like, that doesn't make sense. But the people leaving comments were like, oh, the cruise ships have been there forever. And then my, I've got like one friend that lives in LA. Oh, I came down to the port to go to Mexico. And we went to, you know, I went, one of my close friends, like, oh, I went to, um, I went to, they went to Canada. Right. And I'm like, Really? It's just, yeah, it was on my Facebook page. And I'm like, oh, really? Because I, 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 you know, I don't look at her Facebook page all the time, but I would have, I feel like I would have seen that she took a cruise out of San Diego. I don't know. Um, got somebody in the chat room saying, yeah, I remember San Diego was all military. And uh, yeah, so a lot of people already in the chat room was like, oh yeah, so here we got Sister in Christ once again saying only military. So, it, but here's the thing, like what I was saying, money bags, is that, isn't it, it look, I, I want to like say you guys, you guys are badasses. Everybody who's talking about this phenomenon online, including you, Muddy Bags, everyone who's willing to come out and talk about this, you guys are badasses. Everybody is. Because you guys, you guys are freaking like, <laughs> it's like, it takes a lot of guts, man. It takes a lot of balls to freaking talk about this. It really does. Yeah. Well, 
I mean, it, yeah, I agree with that. It, when you're kind of using a name like I am and, but I, you know, I do periodically kill myself. Uh, but for the most part, I'm talking to people who don't know me. So, right. but I do, I kind of, I saw, uh, Meigs B, do you know who that is? Yes. I saw her do a video the other day, like crying and depressed, sitting under a table and saying how her family doesn't understand her and all this. And I was just thinking to myself, then stop talking to them about it. I stopped talking right. to my family about it. She's she's saying in the video, you know, they should understand my feelings and stuff. And I'm like, well, understand theirs. <laughs> They're not ready to talk about this shit. It's pretty crazy to some people. So so you don't want to be throwing it at them all the time when you see them. I mean, just talk about something else. I mean, I understand that you don't feel like you can be yourself. I feel that way around my own father. And but I don't really talk to him about the Mandela effect. It's just uh I yeah. did in the beginning. Right. And he didn't seem really receptive to it. And so I don't know. It's more fun for me to like, you know, pump him for information about Freemasonry or something. Right. <laughs> because right. he's a Mason, you know. So everyone's got these conspiracies with the you know, Masonic Lodge and stuff, which I grew up running around Masonic Lodges with the symbolism all around. So I'm into all that as well. I've always been researching symbolism. And so, you know, I, I question him on a lot of stuff. And I don't know, he's not this worst devil worshiper like people want to make out all the Freemasons to be. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we don't have to get into that conversation. But I mean, it, it, online, I don't know if you know any Masons, but. Uh, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't not that I know of, not that I'm aware of. Because my grandfathers, my father, they're all into it. And I don't really care to join a group. So I'd rather be an individual. So I don't want to do their rituals and stuff. But right. I'm always kind of interested to like infiltrate and like <laughs> find out what the hell's going on. Yeah. Secret societies and stuff. But Hey man, even, even in this reality, even Kennedy talked about secret societies. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, secret societies, they get their hands in everything from, from the beginning. It started with the mystery schools in Egypt and even in Sumer. So it goes way back, 6,000 plus years. So, hey, hey, money bags, so are you, can you see the chat room? Uh, yep. Okay, cool. Um, can you um, interact with him just for a second and I'll come right back? Sure. Okay, I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. Let me check this out here. Okay, I'm looking at the email. Okay, I'm back. And you guys, I'm going to try, I'm going to throw up the phone number here. We'll see if we can make this work. I, you know, I, I'm going to look at some, um, some streaming software here soon to see if I can make it work like, uh, like some people have been doing lately. But um, anyway, we'll just go with it. I'll give you guys the number here. And if you guys have any questions for money bags, now is the time. Yep. Yeah. I'm not available live very often. Like All right, here it is, you guys. This, but... Yeah, totally. 808-427-2717. Aloha. We're in, uh, we're in uh, uh, Hawaii here. Um, uh, my favorite island of Kauai. 808-427-2717. That's not really true. but Kauai. That's... I just went there. Oh, man, yeah. Freaking I didn't mention that. <laughs> awesome place, huh? Yeah, it was a cool place. I wouldn't want to live there. I feel stuck. I felt stuck. There's oh, is a that right? Place to visit, but I wouldn't want to live there. I don't 
see the draw for people that want to go live there. Is it just you just think it's too isolated? The the rock syndrome yeah, when you feel like isolated. you can't. I drove around the whole island in like you know like three hours. Well, I think I think for most people they have to have they you know they have to be they have to jump between different realities <laughs> like maybe have no, a home somewhere else. In the... Cool. I mean, right. right in front of our our um, timeshare place, the hotel or whatever you want to call it. I mean, there were two rainbow yeah. trees yeah. right in front of the place. It blew my mind. I yeah. never had heard of that in my life. And here we go to Hawaii, and there they are, right there in front of the front of the building. Okay, stand by. Hey, you you have to. Um, we got a caller. Hey, uh, you have to turn down your computer. Turn down your volume on your computer. I forgot to mention that, you guys. If you call, make sure you turn down the volume on your computer. Yeah. Uh, just real quick. Um, are you familiar with the island off the coast of San Diego, not Coronado Island? Yeah, San Clemente. Yeah, I don't remember it named that. Well, do, do you remember the island? I remember San Clemente was where Rich Nixon's from. Right. And so, so see, that's, it was like two years ago that I first saw that island off the coast. Um, so that's, that's a reality shift for you. Um, so that's just something to go along with the cruise ship issue. And, and how about the cruise ships? Did, are you familiar with the cruise ships in San Diego? Yeah, we used to take a lot of cruises and it was always out of San Pedro. Oh, wow. So, so out of Long Beach. LA. And so, and so what do you think about this understanding now we had cruise ships come out of San Diego since the 80s? I, I, I'm right with you are. <laughs> I never seen a cruise ship out of there. Yeah, it's quite a sight. <laughs> it is quite a sight. Well, keep up the good work. Hey, man, thank you so much. We appreciate it. All right. All right, bye. Yeah, so that that um crazy because i was actually bike riding with a friend of mine and we were up on this hill we were we were mountain biking and i'm like well, it was one day one really nice day and it was just it was actually perfect out and i was like I'm looking out at the ocean and i'm like wait what's that island you know and i'm like I'm like dude i've lived here 20 years i've never seen that island before and he's like yeah no i haven't either what is that and yeah it turns out it's called san clemente it's a military island and uh, it's always been there and what really trips me out is I used to go to this beach called San Onofre, um, just almost to Orange County, between San Diego and Orange County. And it's really clear from there. And I mean, I've hiked down because you have to hike down to the beach from there. And you, you, on a, you know, you don't even have to be a clear day. You can see that island really, really well. And um, so, yeah, I mean, we're getting upgrades. It feels like, or we're, or I mean, you know, it sounds like merging realities or, or we're jumping, we're shifting. Well, I'm all over the Bay Area, so I'm waiting for see, I'm waiting for something to pop up for me. I don't see that stuff for some whatever reason. I'm not hmm. of the vibration of uh, being able to see that type of stuff. But I, right. I'm all over the Bay Area, so San Francisco all the time. Oh, you would think. Well, well, you know, for me, one of the things about the Bay for me, just looking at the geography of it the opening to the bay was much larger in my old reality which might mean that the golden gate bridge was longer i don't know but it was much it wasn't such a tight fit it was like i mean i know it's still large but it's like it was much larger that bay was much more open um in the geography i recall yeah see the golden gate bridge area all looks the same as i always remember it right and so that goes along with the whole theory that the people that are close to things don't see it as much maybe if there could be a shift there maybe we get the updates what do you think about that idea some people say oh well you may not see the shift because you got the update yeah like sally fields knowing that her name used to be fields <laughs> right or jim carrey knowing that his name had two r's or had one too r's. weird too weird yeah, I agree with that. I, if you're too close to it, it seems like you don't notice it. Hey, it's going to be 11, 11, 11, 11 here pretty quick. Oh, that's crazy, man. Yeah, All right. Then we'll 11, have... 11 on 11, 11. <laughs> 11, 11 is something I started seeing all the time, almost daily on the clock, um, since post-Mandela effect for me. Yep, it was yep, always 9-11. I've been yep. seeing 9-11 for years. It started after 9-11. And I thought it was just because that event was so 
you know, impressionable on me that I was seeing it, but then it never stopped. And, and it kind of went away for a few years and then it came back and it was, it happens like, it's not, so, I don't even have to be looking to what time it is. It's just I'm drawn. Some, something pulls me to look at the clock at 9-11. Yeah, yeah. But now it's 11-11, constantly, mm -hmm. almost daily. 11-11, I see it. So to me, this, that's part of the awakening. So, yeah, it's one of the awakening codes. It is. And I really believe that. And also like the eight for me, like the infinity, the eight, I see 88 all the freaking time, man. It follows me everywhere. <laughs> yeah, see, I don't see that. It's just um, 11, 11, 11, 22. I mean, I see that all the time. Anybody else got any call-ins? 808-427-2717, 808-427-2717. Somebody's got to have some questions for this man. Come on, bring it on. Yeah, I mean, I've done a few videos. I know a little bit about this. <laughs> <laughs> Not Don't that be shy, I know so much about what's happening, but uh, hey, anyone who likes to talk about this or that's changed, I'm kind of up on all that. Where do you think where do you think it's headed? Do you have any any ideas on it? Oh, I think that uh, this is just going to continue to increase. To me, I've been waking up since 9/11. It's been a long awakening process for me, and uh, they kicked in a high gear with this. And so I've become more spiritual, trying to like raise my vibration and just paying more attention to the part of me that you know that you got to go on the go inside to find i mean i've been trying to mm -hmm. meditate more and just i have become more spiritual i guess i mean this is life is exciting every day is totally exciting it's like it what I, I agree with you it was a little bit mundane just um a little on the boring side. I have my family, my wife and two kids and and all that, and my commute and my job and rat in the wheel type thing. But, um, you know, I lost my job, my corporate job, just before, oh, when was that? That would have been June of, oh, no. I think this started, this started just a few months before I was laid off. So then I had all this time. So that's why I had so much time to make all the videos when I got hit with this. And then, you know, now this, this year I haven't had as much time, but for some reason I had a lot of time last year and you needed a lot of time to do thousands of hours of research on the Mandela effect. Oh my God. It to, takes so much time. You guys. Yeah. If you want to put out the amount of videos I put out, um, with the amount of research I put in them, just going through searching on google searching youtube searching everywhere to try and get reality residue i mean i have such a wealth of information and when i have the time oh that's funny when i have the time time doesn't even exist uh actually there's no such thing as time so i'm kind of you know trying to be more in the now and trying not to think such linear time but that's really hard because we're so fixed into that. But oh, yeah. yeah anyway, it's... what I was going to say was when I have the time, I'm going to organize my videos. I'm going to organize them into all the, the TV, you know, the television shows, the movie quotes, the um, logo changes, the spelling word changes, the everything, all the different categories so that you can just go to my channel. And if you're looking for a, a song lyric change or whatever, um, They'll all be there. They'll all be in the, whatever you call it, the playlist. You know, I want to, I have like 270 or 280 videos. Um, I have 900, believe it or not, 937 on my channel. Because wow. I've been building this channel since 2009. Right. It took six years to get 10,000 people. And then when the Mandela effect hit, I just totally switched gears quit the financial information which was low vibrational negative stuff anyway and then just took off with the mandela effect and i lost like half of those people it took me five or six years to get they just dropped off five thousand people and then wow. since then i added twenty five thousand new people that's crazy man yeah i mean <laughs> i don't know who does that they just just change gears and totally 100 percent stop talking about what they did and have a brand new topic and 
and just watch people just fall off every day. What? They're like, could you imagine? I was talking about the Federal Reserve and stuff, and then all of a sudden I'm talking about, hey, I don't remember Jiffy <laughs> being JIF. What is this? And they're like, what is wrong with this guy? Right, it's right. Like, it was so crazy. <laughs> I started what? talking about Jiffy and, and Febreze and shit. <laughs> I was talking about the Federal Reserve and interest rates and gold and silver for so many years. Which goes to show you, you know, if this thing wasn't a real phenomenon, then you just would not have gained those kind of subscri you know, subscriptions. You just wouldn't have those subs. There's no way. Or I wouldn't have been willing to, like, just blow off the 10,000 that I took six years to gain. <laughs> I just totally blew those people off. <laughs> They were looking to come to my channel to hear stuff about the Federal Reserve, and it just stopped. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Oh, man. It's, it's, it's a oh, ride. It's calling in? Come on. There's got to be someone that can call in here. Where are these people at? Yeah, you guys, come on in. Uh, it's, uh, I'll give out the number again. So uh, it's 808-427-2717. Um, okay. How about Australia? Australia is a huge Mandela effect. I mean, the geography is just nuts. Yeah, it's just I did nuts. my geography video early on. It's totally nuts. The whole South I mean, America and you know what, Australia, those are like the big ones. Right. I mean, to me, like when I look at, for sure, those are the big ones. But when I look at Florida and I look how close the Bahamas are now, the Bahamas are now within the Bermuda Triangle. No, the Bermuda Triangle was always open ocean. There was never any islands within the, you know, the triangle ever. And now we've got, you know, Cuba so close to freaking Florida. We've Cuba's got the Bahamas. huge. Cuba's Have you seen huge. how long it is? Yeah, it's, it's massive. So and and I mean, and you know, so when you look at look growing up, you know, learning about geography, if you would have seen, it just wouldn't have made sense. Like, well, how is it we got Hawaii on this timeline? How is it we were able to get Hawaii? But we weren't able to get, you know, these other islands so close to the freaking United States. It's like everything's condensed. It's like everything's smaller now. Yeah, it's like a smaller uh, version of Earth. The land on the planet. This planet, I don't know, what's the circumference? 27,000 miles? Is times the line? Uh, make sure you turn your computer down, your computer sound down. Who <laughs> who we got on the line? Yeah. Oh, this turn, Hi. 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 I'm sorry, who, who are we speaking with? Sister in Christ. Sister in Christ. Hi, a little bit you? of an echo. Okay, a little bit of an echo. Okay, yeah, we're, we're going to work on this eventually, but go ahead. It's not bad. I just wanted to confirm that I lived in San Diego in the 80s, and there was never cruise ship there. I couldn't believe it. Wow. That must have just totally blown you away when you saw them. Oh, it blew me away. It still blows me away. It still blows me away. I just, I just, I like, I, if I could, I would just go down and spend my days looking at the cruise ships coming in and going. It, that's how much, how, how cool I think it is. <laughs> it's like awesome. In a way. So, my personal Mandela effect is, um, I moved into my grandmother's house about three years ago. She died, and my parents inherited this house. And so she had planted a row, probably about 20 feet long, of lily. And they're really ugly. Um, they're like a pale yellow. And so when I moved in here, me and my mom was talking like, these these lilies are really ugly. My grandmother had given the first song, and she'd given the neighbor's song. Because lilies are bold. And so, you know, they multiply it after a certain point period. So anyway, um, come up. And this year, instead of coming up a pale yellow, they all came out of base. Fiery, bright red. Wow. So that's really weird for a bulb. Especially a bulb yeah, that's, that's like 25 or 30 years old. Yeah, that's quite strange. And it wasn't just one. 
It was the whole row. That's pretty cool. That's pretty interesting. Hey, so that was my personal Mandela effect. No, wow. Hey, you guys, I just, you ever noticed. I, I, hey, you guys, I just had this thought. And uh, if you want to stay on the line for a second, um, you don't have to get off the phone here, but we're about to hit 11, 11. You guys, let's, let's manifest what it, make a wish. You guys, we got to do it. You guys get, get, get ready. We're going to make our wishes now. Okay, let's just have a moment of silence. Let's make some really powerful wishes, wishes for this reality, for our, for our friends, for our family, for whatever it is you want to manifest. This is the time. And of course, this is Pacific time. I recognize you guys are, some of you are in different times. Someone's wishing that C-3PO's leg would go back to being gold. All right, cool, man. So you guys, if you're, if you're, if you're hearing this in a replay, it's okay. You can still tap into that energy. <laughs> I really truly believe there's something something really awesome about right what just happened there. So you got you got anything else for us? I really appreciate the cruise ship story and, and the and the the Lily story is pretty awesome as well. Yeah. Well I just wanted to share and I wanted to thank you and Money Bag and Brian McFarland for putting out all your wonderful videos and putting yourselves out there. Because I know it's not easy. So thank you. You're welcome. It's difficult at times. Yeah, it, it, it is. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for, thank you for participating. We so appreciate it. All right. Talk to you later. Okay. Talk to you later. Bye. Okay. Take care. Bye. Go create the reality that you want. All right, you guys, that's all the calls we're going to do. Um, so I meant to ask you, um, as far as creating the reality that you want. So my whole life, I've been, not my whole life, my, whole, my son's entire life, since we started talking, I've been telling him that his thoughts and beliefs create his reality. Right. And so he believes that. He's on board 100%. Uh, he gets confused when things don't happen that he plans on happening. And so I'm like, well, the best thing I could say is that sometimes that's a blessing in disguise when things don't happen the way you were trying to force them. Uh, some, it seems like in my life when things don't go right, uh, so often later on, I'm like, man, I'm kind of glad that didn't work out the way I was trying to push it. Right. Uh, I don't know. It's just, I really do. That's the number one thing for me with the Mandel effect, the, the idea that's been driven home for me is that we are creating our own realities with our thoughts and beliefs. Oh my God. I believe that. I believe, I believe, I believe. 100%. 100%. Cause I see people at work and, uh, some of them are so negative and then they have these negative things happening and they're just constantly drawing more negativity. And they just get mad and angry and they're in a low vibrational state and then they just attract more of that. So what I tried to do was there's a few people that I've had issues with. And so rather than on my way to work, say, man, you know, John, he's such an ass, man. He's going to be an ass today and he's just going to be, a, you know, a total jerk. But, and then that's what you would get, right? Exactly. <laughs> so why not drive to work and just envision him coming up and just say, you know, being nice to you and envision him as a nice guy. And then see, but you have to be on board with this. You have to believe that there's multiple versions of each of us. 
and you could see that John, that's a cool dude. Right. But if you're thinking John's a jerk on your way to work, you're going to get the jerk. I so agree with this. So I've been trying to incorporate this more in my life where I try and envision the person the way I want them to be. And it's not easy because it's usually they're a jerk. But if you go along with it, it's not, you're not going to get anything different. But I think we can shift. And I think that, that your belief that he's not a jerk, that, um, you know, he's a, actually a cool guy. And maybe you can see that version of him. I believe we can. This is a learning process. I mean, this, this has just kicked in so many things into my scope of awareness. And, and the learning process is, you know, ongoing. I'm always learning. Absolutely. And you, and you know, how about the behind the scenes? You know, you, everyone sees the, you know, what you do, but what about the emails you get? What about the interactions behind the scenes? Do you want to talk about that at all? As far as like emails you get, like, you know, like maybe the things you, you don't talk about, maybe the emails you get, the uh, interactions with people behind the scenes. Do you, I mean, do you want to, I don't have a whole lot. I mean, you I don't. don't. Okay. No. Um, I mean, I have people that email me as a right. list of people. And at some point I was getting so many emails, it's hard to tell who's who, cause you can't really, there's just names. So it's hard to pinpoint, you know, who's who, uh, that's another thing. I'm sure you've had this happen. And a lot of the people who've made several videos, uh, you know, over a hundred have people sending them things. So it seems like we're finding all this stuff, but a lot of people send me stuff. I get tons of messages and, you know, private messages or emails. And so a lot of that stuff, if, if it's an effect for me, then I'll make a video on it. Cause I usually only make videos on things that I'm, I, I'm affected by. Same here. So, you know, but I'm constantly looking I'm constantly searching the internet for things because believe it or not, after all this time, I enjoy the feeling that I get when something, it just doesn't match my memory. It's a weird feeling. It's like a weird, eerie, chill down your spine, like feeling. And it's like, yep, yeah, this is, this is another one. Yeah, it's you know a bit of a feeling, rush, right? It's, it yeah, is it's a rush. It's yeah. weird. Yeah, no, it's like it's like seeing the cruise ships, man. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? Like, I'm just like, I'm standing there. I actually pull into an area that, like, I didn't even know, like, because there was like this. I don't remember the boardwalk, and that some security guard came and said, "Be careful, there's people crossing here." And I pulled in right where the on Broadway, so the street is Broadway, and Broadway meets the cruise ship port there in San Diego, and I'm like. I, I didn't know where I was pulling into because of my reality, it wasn't like that before. And I mean, and I, all I could do is just like, I just had to stare at this freaking huge, massive cruise ship. And it's not even as huge as some of the ones that pull up there these days and leave there. My girlfriend's having to watch me just go off. She's just like, she's used to it by now. She's seen me do it a few times, but I'm like, no way. I mean, 20 years in San Diego, I would have freaking taken a cruise out of here. I would have like, you can go to Hawaii from San Diego now. That was never possible. I was researching years ago, thinking about taking a cruise. I'm like, oh, I have to go to freaking Long Beach. I'm like, nah, I'm not going to do that. I'm good. You yeah, know. That's oh, by the way, we got taco. Yeah, no, it's so cool, actually. I was excited. Taco, he, uh, see, he says, oh, yeah, Taco says, too, my experience, no cruise ships. And he backs up my thing about the mobile homes. Mobile, home, mobile homes on the beach. And RVR was in existence at the same time as the mobile homes in 1997. But Taco remembers the Four Seasons of VR in Carlsbad where I do not. Like that to me, that was, although it's kind of hidden so you could miss it. But I, you know, when you've been doing this long enough, you can, you get a feeling whether it was part of your original timeline or not. And so that, that's, um, oh, so they're asking when the cruise ship started. Oh, so th on this timeline, in the 80s is when cruise ships for they had like one in the 70s or few in the 70s but the real cruise ship business started in the 80s on this timeline but yeah you get a feeling you get a feeling it's almost like the movie the sixth sense you know it's like something happens it's like it's like the sense some kind of sense comes up and you can just feel it whether it's true or not yeah so uh have you noticed your memories 
pretty much what percentage match mine that I say don't match reality. Ours, ours align pretty, pretty well. I mean, that, that's, there's, th that's one of the things that's interesting about the phenomenon is you can have people that are so awake to the phenomenon, but our reality bubbles are slightly different. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll have like solid memories of some things, but not so solid memories on another. For instance, haven't asked you yet, was there a Halloween Grinch? I never heard of that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> never heard of that before. But I'm not a huge, you know, I could have missed it. That's the word right. I am on that. But I never heard of it. Yeah. Well, look, if all the, all the stuff. It was always I, the Grinch who stole Christmas. For yeah, me. it was the Grinch. Yeah, it was the Grinch who stole Christmas, not how the Grinch stole Christmas. How the Grinch stole, yeah, that's bizarre. That's, that's bizarre, but Some there were people. Land. But the thing is, once again, we're not calling those people wrong that are from that oh, house. No, they're, they have all the evidence on their side. Exactly. <laughs> all, they're all, right. They're, they're right. 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 It's yeah, well, because, that. yeah, well, because, yeah, well, because, but there yet there is tons of reality residue of. Well, that's true. There's evidence on both sides, but the official is. story. So, so uh, that's what's confusing. It's like we have a baseline reality, right? That we're all matching. Pretty much most of the time we're matching this vibration of this reality. Right. But then we're constantly shifting in and out. And for some reason, this other reality has like, or two or three or four, like we were talking about, have, have, they've, uh, what do you call, like shifted, um, merged. It's like they're in a process of merging. I don't yes. Know what's going, this is so bizarre. Yes, it, it, it is exactly, feel, it does feel like that. remember the life cereal, Mikey likes it. Oh my God. And what is it now? He hates everything. Oh my God. Yeah, it's just, that's. Let's yeah. get Mikey. He won't eat it. He hates everything. <laughs> no, I know, but so, oh man, I don't know. So it's so crazy the people that, um, I mean, I understand where they're coming from, but all these people who say, no, this is not a Mandela effect. I know this was this way for sure. And I'm like, yes, you're correct. Always has been that way. But it's like, I got all these judges always coming on the channel and they're like, no, this is not a Mandela effect. You have a bad memory on this, this particular, I am experiencing the, the phenomenon and, but this is not an effect. Well, sorry, but it's an effect for me and the other 500 people who thumbed up the video. If you're one of the 50 people who thumbed it down, then that's fine. But for you to say this is not an effect when like 500 people said this is not how it was for them either. I mean, how, I don't know. I don't understand some of these people who are just like trying to be judges. We're all experiencing the Mandela effect at different times. We're experiencing right. different effects at different times. The Andrew Zimmerman, right? The right. Bizarre Foods guy. I did a right. video on that. And then I had someone, it was like a year later, and someone had just found out about it. And they're like, I watch that show all the time. He was Andrew Zimmerman last week. And I'm like, well, I've, or he was, yeah, Andrew Zimmerman last week. And I'm like, well, I've known he was Zimmern for like a year now. So he was Zimmerman for you up until a few days ago. So I don't know. He saw Zimmerman like on the show as he watched it. <laughs> How could that be? He's always been Zimmerman. I don't know. So crazy. Yeah. So it's like you said earlier, it could be that, you know, we're kind of helping each other shift <laughs> and maybe we're all shifting. I don't know, maybe into an ultimate reality. I mean, it almost feels like a game. It's almost like a Sims game. Somebody's in, you know, under the, you know, at the controls and they're creating the most, they're, it's almost like they're, it's, you know, whatever's in control here. It's almost like they're grafting. They're trying to graft the most ultimate reality. And that's cool. I, I, but I have a problem. I have a problem with a few things. But Trump is president. Like where I was from, that just would never have happened. I'm, and I'm serious about it. I really believe that. I don't think Trump would have ever made it into presidency. I was expecting from. Hillary to be president. Yeah. And that would have been scary. But. Well. Yeah, I don't want to get into a political discussion. Right, yeah, we don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah, All but it takes but the in religion. My two yeah, favorite those are two subjects. Parts, but I don't want to get into. Oh, that. I know. I, I agree with you. I agree with you. But well, but I still find. Religion. Yeah. I still find it bizarre that that he is. You know. I do president. too, and that he's like on Twitter all the time. <laughs> it's funny. 
I don't even know what he's doing. I don't watch television news at all. So uh, like, I don't, I even... don't either, but I do on my phone. I get these like things come up. Yeah. The only so, time I, I hear search any... for stuff. So it pings up uh, news articles I might be interested in. Like if right. I go to that side of my phone where the news is at. So I see stuff and I see like, you know, he tweets stuff and I don't know. I see stuff like Kardashian updates and shit. I mean, not that I care, but. Oh, so here, you know, you were, you were talking about, you know, what things we match on and what things we don't match on. I think I've got one we don't match on. What's that? I, how many people in JFK car? Four. See, and I'm six. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm, one, I'm, I'm like in the minority with this. Like, I, unless at some point during my, you know, growing up, I, I shifted, I got the update. It's possible I got the update because it could have been four in the beginning. I can't say it wasn't for me, but like during all my time, you know, researching JFK conspiracy stuff, I can say for the past, oh God, at least 30 years, you know, 20 years or something like that, 25 years since I've been like, since I became like aware of it since the internet started and stuff. And I was researching JFK because I, I was very interested in this for many reasons. There's a whole story behind it, but there was always six for me. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, I remember seeing the re uh, reputer. Is that what it's called? Reputer Zaputer film? film. Yeah. Zaputer. Um, Zaputer film. I remember seeing that, you know, 10 years ago or whatever on the internet and a handful of times. And it just seems weird with the governor and his wife in the middle now. Mm -hmm. It seems foreign to me. Mm -hmm. I don't remember seeing it with them. And you know what's one of the most bizarre things about the Mandela effect is that the Simpsons almost always match my memory. Right. You know, you know the Simpsons cartoons. There's so many. There's like 30 or 40 cartoons that have like the old memories. I find that weird. Yeah. Was Eli Whitney a black guy for you? Oh, definitely. <laughs> Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Yeah, I was camping and I asked some of the, my dad's generation, like his, his, uh, his cousin and this other guy, I'm like, Eli Whitney. Like, yeah, he was a black guy. Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. no, he was a white guy who went to Harvard. <laughs> They're like, what? <laughs> it's so weird when you spring stuff on people. And then I asked this other guy, Jim, I'm like, hey, Jim. You ever eat Jiffy peanut butter? He's like, yeah, I eat Jiffy peanut butter. I'm like, no, you haven't. He's like, yes, I have. And we started arguing. And then I told him that it doesn't exist. And then he just like gave me this weirdest look. And then I said, it's always been JIF. And he didn't even know how to respond to that. <laughs> it's just so funny sometimes. Uh, some people are talking about uh, geography um, again. So Magnol... I can't, even say, I can't even say it. Mongolia? Mongolia. <laughs> yeah, that was never a country. It was like a, a, I don't know what you would call it. It was a territory inside of China. Right. Right? I mean, they were nomads. <laughs> it's massive. I mean, this, this country is it's massive. It's huge. It doesn't look right. I don't remember it being there separating Russia from China. This huge Mongolia. Oh, and they uh, sent troops to Iraq when we invaded Iraq. Yeah, and 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 if you look at the country, it just seems so like nomadish. It's like, it, it's just you know, it's just weird. Yeah, Ita Italy's uh, a big one for me because I'm Italian. My dad's grandparents came from Italy to San Francisco. San so, Francisco. do you remember Sicily being that close to Italy? No, no. I, I looked at that a lot as a kid. It was a lay. It was a boot kicking a ball. And the ball was going to be kicked. It wasn't like on the toe. There yeah. was a separation there. So looking at it now, why did they never build a bridge? I mean, yeah. it's only, what is it, like not even a mile apart? Well, no, it's, it's much larger than that, I think. But, but the truth is, like, if you look at it, like by now with all the technology, regardless of political stuff, that would have happened. And I guess they're still trying to make it happen. I mean, look at, look at where Russia and freaking Alaska are. Are you kidding me? Yeah, that wasn't I mean, that close at all. It was never that close. And Canada is huge. Yeah, huge. Canada looks weird. The whole thing, it like reaches way out over the East Coast of the United States. Just that whole thing just looked odd. There's so many changes. I did, so I many. did a video like with 30 changes, like right a month after I got hit with the Mandela effect. Yep. There's and, so many things that just don't look right. The Great Wall of India, someone just mentioned here. That's odd that I never heard of that.
Great Wall of India. Wow. I mean, I have since an adult that, but right before that, I never had heard of that. Where's our North Pole? Where's the North Pole ice cap? <laughs> now, I remember an ice cap. I don't ever remember a landmass. But I remember a year-round ice cap. Absolutely. Yeah. Where, where, I remember where... it being depicted on the globe and on right, maps. Correct. Oh, yeah. You can't find any globe with the ice cap on there now. Never existed. Mm -mm. Even the old stuff wasn't on there. So I saw Jim Carrey. He was on some interview, and he had a map. He held it up, and it had the ice cap on both sides. In the very beginning of this, there was a lady that showed uh, like an old – globe and a new globe side by side and I, I can't find that video anymore and i was just like i, I was like huh like i like, and i was like i just wanted to find that glue it looked like she was like somewhere like a, a public place where this was at and they were like side by side it's almost like look the people that really know about what's happening here believe me you don't let's let's talk about that for a minute because you know this this whole phenomenon has got to be being monitored what do you think about this whole like like, what are the elites? The elites obviously know. Because did you see that one video where one of the politicians is talking about the new world? The old, or he's an old earther, or old. And, uh, was 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 that what he said? Old earther. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. I vaguely remember what you're talking about. But what do you think about like the elites and what this might like? They must be monitoring this by to some degree. Obviously, I mean, reality is noticeably shifting has noticeably shift for i don't know how many people millions Do, are they just not well, concerned not because sure. because not it's sure not the majority it. i'm just wondering yeah, well i always thought that they would never come out and say anything as you know with things that might shock people just as afraid to put people into fear right i mean the mainstream media they're not afraid to throw you into fear that's their agenda right but um you know, as far as official statements from the government and stuff, I just, I don't think they'd get on the news and say, hey, it seems like reality is shifting. It just doesn't seem like. No, no, no. I know that. Of course not. But I mean, you, I mean, do you agree that they have to be monitoring this phenomenon? <laughs> you mean like Trump's like looking to see if Staples is changing back or something? <laughs> I mean, I mean the sense of like, like, like who's it? They might. Trump is a, is experiencing it. I know he is. From things that he said, I can tell he's he's got the memories of the old old reality. He's from yeah, he's from the old Earth, right? I'm I'm I would it would I don't know. I would just love for him to just mention the Madola thing in a positive way. I'm afraid this movie coming out is gonna put it in a negative light. You know? Yeah, I heard it's coming out soon. Coming out. Yeah. I yeah, mean, I have I have the same thing about a guy who, you know, it, it talks it's called the Mandel effect, I guess, right? It is. I'm wondering how that's going to be. I'm what I don't know. I always wondered what if there'd be a trigger to like wake up another like a second level shift. Right. And that, and that and that and and money bags that brings me to this this thing I was going to say earlier that, that I'm glad I remembered. Doesn't it seem like there is a cap on this because it's like it'll it'll go so far but it won't go to the point where it's obvious at this point we we haven't seen anything that's going to be obvious for the masses do you know what i'm saying it's like it's not like there's something that is so out in left field that the left brain wakes up for the masses it almost feels like it's yeah it's, you mean like a statue of liberty like in the middle of kansas or something correct I mean, something like, where the hell did that come from? <laughs> Correct. Yeah, there's nothing there. Well, I mean, shit. Australia was the land down under. I know. I, I mean, that's so huge. It's it massive. didn't physically move. It's always been where it is. Right. And I have people say, oh, well, you know, we have new projections and new maps and new technology. I'm like, hey, buddy, my 1991 college atlas it, the book's all different than mm -hmm. my, my my memory right i mean on my bookshelf and i and so i think it, yeah i think it comes down to this is not the construct of reality we were taught and so for most people they're still going to go they're going to revert back to the to the old construct and it's too unbelievable 
that this can be this way. So they just adopt and follow the sheep and just like, okay, well, whatever. This is, the, you know, and, and in some way I agree with it because like, okay, present moment is what we need to do. Like we really, you know, it's fascinating to get caught up in the changes and what it all means, but live your life and be in the present moment. And I, I you know, I mentioned one time about maybe this is too much. Like, let's say we are in a game called life and we don't, we came here to forget. We came here to have an experience and maybe this just wakes us up too much. You know, maybe for some people it's like, you know what? I just want to stay asleep here in this reality. And I don't, I don't want to be jolted out of it. I don't want to wake up. I just want to freaking party and have a good time. No, I understand that, but it's time to wake up. I mean, the ancient, all, almost all the ancient culture. You remember 2012, what a big deal it was, December 21st, yes, 2012. Right. Okay, all the ancient cultures, Edgar Cayce, all these uh, Nostradamus, all these people prophet, um, you know, people prophesizing the future and all these ancient cultures, they all pointed towards that date. So I'm under the impression that the world did end, the world I knew, it ended and it's been a process. It wasn't like overnight. I never thought anything was going to happen on December 21st, but it's a transition. We're transitioning into a new age and the old age is gone. And so I know a lot of the religious folks have a problem with talking about new age, old age. It's in the Bible though. It's this whole thing about the ages. It's all in the Bible. So it's not something that's, you know, new age, you know, the, the term new age. Well, Actually, new age is very old, so it's not just new age. Hey, I, I agree with you. You know, there, there's there's a lot of um, waypoints when I've done research of the things, including the hotels, some buildings I've seen shift, that 2012 date, even Chick-fil-A building, the building that I saw shift almost in real time. Within a week, I saw that building shift. And on this timeline, that building was built in 2012. And the same with the freaking hotel. Uh, down there on the freaking, you know, the 101 in Carlsbad, that was built in 2012. So there's a lot of waypoints for me of some of the reality shifts I've seen. And that 2012 date is, God, it, it shows up a lot. And so I really, I think there is something to it. I really do. Definitely think there's something with the 2012. I mean, we were, well, it's a great year that's coming to an end, 26,000 year cycle. It's like you have the, the one, the year cycle and and the uh, day cycle. We well, have a great year, which is twenty twenty five thousand nine hundred and twenty. I don't know if you know the exact years, but it came to an end. So you know, like I don't like to to ignore the uh, like the ancient Indians and their beliefs. I mean, we had people come and say, "Well, you have to believe this, or we're going to kill you." I mean, there was a lot of that going on, but they have their own beliefs like the Mayans and and the Aztecs and stuff and so I like to look at a lot of information so I look all around and um, they're saying that we're in the fifth sun or fifth the fifth world or something I mean it seems like and then there's all the D Dolores Cannon information I don't know if you've looked at that oh my god it's crazy in fact a lot of people say that, that she's a reality shift that, that, that they didn't know who she was until recently I never heard of her, and I've been into this information for a long time. I've been I had, I had all either, into had... 2012, yep. and I never heard of her. I, she, she, I think she's a Mandela effect. I really do. She came out of nowhere after the, after the Mandela effect for me. You truly so did. Just since March 2016. Yep. I had never, ever heard of her. I would have been reading her books. You know, I, I've read a lot of information about the type of stuff she talked about. Absolutely. And I so agree. I'm surprised I never heard of her. So, so money bags behind the scenes, and you guys have, have known that, you know, this has been one of my theories. What do you think about the quantum immortality and that, you know, how we, some of us got here is because we death shifted. It was one of the shifts that happened to get us where we are now. I, I'm going to tell you guys that I get so much email about this part of the equation, this part of the puzzle that so many people, including like Laszlo is like, Laszlo is like, oh, I've died like at least three times, you know? And, and they're like, they're like in their knowing, like they're so in their freaking avatar when they say they're so like, oh yeah, I've shifted at least three or four times. And when I look back at my life, I'm like, you know what? It is possible or my life, I guess my consciousness <laughs> of experience of life 
I think there's a possibility that I, I can see like f a few different waypoints in my life where it could have happened. And you know what's really crazy is that somebody just said crazy in the chat room. That's crazy. But what's really crazy is that I'm like, oh my gosh, give me a moment here. So, ah, see, this really gets me because there, there, there's just such a there's a there's there's a piece of the puzzle here. There's really for a lot of freaking people. Oh, okay. So what I was gonna say is that I've looked around at some people I know. Okay, that. You know, you'd see photos on Facebook of their car crashes. These are people I know personally. And you're looking at their car crash and you're like, no. And they're like, oh my God, we should not have it. We should not have survived that. You know, me and my friend, we look at our car, look at our whatever, whatever. And I saw another one. Both of them were rollover type car accidents and they were not even like injured, barely, barely. Mm -hmm. And so I, I don't know, man. I, bottom line is I don't believe the construct of death is what we were taught. And I just got an email yesterday about this. And it's so like even the person that emailed me says a lot of people within this community are, you know, some people will talk about it, but a lot of other people are just, you know, uncomfortable with the subject. But what if it's true? You know, this is what it's based upon. I didn't want to even close this, you know, this live cast tonight without even talking about it, without bringing it up. Because... It's based upon Nelson Mandela dying in prison, which I do remember. And I also didn't, I don't have a strong memory of him growing up and becoming, you know, the president of South Africa. He only just adopted it because it was what, you know, what is now here. And then Shirley freaking Temple, 10 years old without a freaking doubt. And when I go and look at the newspaper archives and I see that she died, I can, I can see where she would have died, where she was really sick at 10 years old. A point on the other timeline. And so, so there is a very monumental, large piece of the puzzle, I believe still, that is related to this phenomenon. And so to me, if the possibility exists that we do continue to shift and that it's not just uh, lights out, you know, end of story, then that's big because we take, around, we take away two of the big ones, you know, one of the two big ones you know, death and taxes. So if we can take away that fear of death, then yeah. I mean, what if there's people out there that know this to be a fact? Maybe the elites, maybe the Illuminati, maybe the Masons, maybe they know this. And so maybe they live their lives differently because they know that the construct is not such that you have to fear that. Maybe it's a cycle. Some people talk about Saturn and you know, we're stuck in a matrix and we're stuck in a, a loop, you know, whatever. But whatever it is to me, you know, and if I'm ignorant to it, whatever, because I still think the experience of life is a, is a beautiful freaking thing and it's a miracle and it's amazing and all these things. So if I was given a second, third or fourth chance, I'm incredibly grateful. And I'm like, right now I'm like getting chills. So again, like this has been happening a lot to me. Anytime I speak something that I feel is like, I don't know, maybe I'm psyching myself up. But this feels like truth because I'm getting chills right now. And it's always been like, especially the past two years, when I've spoke something and I get chills, it just says there's truth, there's truth there. It may not be completely true, but there's, there's an element of truth there. So do you have any thoughts around this? And do you see any waypoints in your life experience consciousness where you could have shifted that way? Yeah, I think that's definitely a possibility now with all this. I mean, it, uh, because I believe everything's consciousness, so the consciousness doesn't die. Um, so that makes total, total sense. If, if, you know, your consciousness just shifts, that's what I think this is, the consciousness shift. For right. whatever reason, my consciousness shifted over here. There's still a me over there, but my consciousness left the dominant timeline and shifted to a different frequency right so that's what i think is going on so it makes total sense what you're saying i mean i've died twice in my dreams mm -hmm. you ever died in a dream oh my god like so vividly so yeah. vividly so maybe i don't know I, I i never really met anyone who talked to me about dying in their dreams right but i've died twice 
once was, um, well, when I was a kid, I was probably 10 or 11. I, I died in a dream and that stuck with me for a long time. It was a really weird feeling. It was a comfortable feeling. Uh, this whale, I was standing on the beach and this whale just came up out of the ocean and just like came down on me. And I just got this feeling of like being sucked through a, a, a void and then it was just pitch black. But I was aware. I was That's conscious. crazy. That's crazy. Because someone just said in the chat room, second chance or sucked into a computer like matrix i mean i saw the word suck the moment you said suck <laughs> that's funny <laughs> no i was sucked it was like a i was it was like a falling type just i don't know i was being sucked somewhere right but it was i could had a sensation of being pulled mm -hmm. but my consciousness never stopped i was conscious of what was happening and i thought to myself okay this is what it feels like to die right and then again when i was in my 20s i was in a house and it was on fire, it was burning, and I fell through several stories, two or three stories or something, and then I hit the bottom and all these lumber just came down on me and I had the same exact sensation. It was just, everything went black, and then I was being, you know, I had this sensation of like a total numbness and just comfortably, comfortably numb, like Pink Floyd says. And, uh, right. But I was conscious. And so my consciousness didn't seem to change at all. It was just a, like a separation from the physical body at right. the moment of, of, you know, dying in the dream. I was just separated. But the consciousness just, I was just as conscious as I was when I was, you know, in the body. So that's what I, that's my opinion on, um, you know, on that. Yeah. I, just, I mean, you know, everyone I've talked to, it's not off the table for them. And, and, and you know, what the bottom line is, like... If, there's nothing to fear, you know, regardless, like I know it's a, a freaky thing to talk about because we've been taught so much like, well, things around it to, to fear yeah. it and yeah. the, the fear of the unknown well, and all this kind of thing. It's not a happy thing to talk about because you have loved ones and you don't want to think of them being gone. Yeah, but. It's not a happy subject. But, you know, I know and, I, and I've lost some close people to me as so many people have, right? But, mm -hmm. you know, my brother like I'm actually like I'm gonna say it. I am convinced that he moved on and lived lived his life, and he could still be living. I mean, he's his consciousness moved on, and he somewhere he did not get into a car accident when I was twelve. He actually went somewhere else. I mean, he did obviously on this timeline that I, I the one I experienced, but I truly am in the belief now that he's somewhere else, and that you know he, he continued to live out his life and he knew nothing better. I really believe this. Yeah, that's it's, possible. Yeah. I believe it's crazy that's a possibility, definitely. And, and if you know, and if we if we shift, we're just not supposed to know. I mean, it's like it's not. It wouldn't. It wouldn't work. Like it wouldn't work. They're, 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 the the program. Maybe some people do remember, but for most people, if that were you know if that is a real thing, you know, then that that would spoil it. That would spoil it. You couldn't continue on. Right down the path if you knew in the other timeline you had shifted from. Doesn't it blow your mind that we're even able here to sit and talk about this? I mean, that, what, what's go, what is this? What are we sitting here talking about this? Why am I sitting in this office? I mean, I've always had those questions in my mind my whole life, and I think that's a type of person that's seeing the Mandela effect. People who just go about their daily lives and just, I don't know. They don't, don't look at it. Question right. the big picture. They don't like see the forest for the trees. I mean, they do see the. They don't see the forest. They just see the trees around them. They don't. They don't like. They don't t take a step back and like wonder what's going on here. It's all. I mean, so when you get down to it, I think it's. Um, well, there's just one word that comes to mind when I think of life is love. I mean, that's to me what, what life is. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, me it's, too. I mean, when you, when you think about the, 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 the times in your life that you were, you know, so excited about and that you held so dear and precious to you, you know, yeah, you might be able to look back and go, man, you know, when I had that Ferrari, <laughs> That was awesome. I love driving my Ferrari. And that was a life experience I really enjoyed. But when it really comes down to it, it's like, you know, it is those times of 
experiencing love in whatever form mm -hmm. i have to agree that's 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 i think that's one of the main things we're here to experience yeah that's to me family's always been important because usually you get love from family mm -hmm. I mean, it's um that's like the most important thing i mean the riches the things you can buy that make you happy for a little while but you know you always see so many rich people these um famous people they have so many problems addicted right. to drugs and alcohol and just you know depression and stuff what are you depressed about you got everything you want they don't have love a lot of them some of them so, do well no i mean a lot of them that are deep in depression they're not they can't be feeling love right coming right from a place of fear yeah money money and doesn't I, make you happy no not at all that's what i've been telling trying to explain to my wife for so many years she's like well if you had more money we wouldn't be concerned about because money causes a lot of divorces and a lot of fights money and um you know hey that that's that's like the big that's, one and infidelity but i mean money's like the it's one of the main one. ones it's one of the main ones it makes things uh a lot easier you know, a lot of people and by the way that says a lot coming from money bags right <laughs> um yeah and money bags i picked that because i'm all about the money right that's why I well i i know I, i've heard your trolls say that about you yeah <laughs> that's just so ridiculous they don't even care to look deep enough to see that i had a financial channel for six years on youtube right <laughs> i even have the same banner to show people hey mandel effect blew me away so much i just switched gears and left my old banner there with gold and silver on it right yeah i mean and that's what's so that's what's so crazy about this too you you can have a channel about i don't know cars you can have a channel about you know financial stuff and then you talk about the mandela effect and it's going to grow more than it ever did when you had those other things yep you know i i, I went to work the other day and and people I don't know. I talk to people about what I do and stuff and not everyone, but some people. I went to work one day and this guy's like, Hey man, I found out about you. <laughs> it was all weird. <laughs> and he's talking about my YouTube channel. And he's like, Hey, and he starts telling me about some geography stuff. And he's like, I watched your video. And, and then uh, so I asked him a few things and you know, I'm I'm surprised at the amount of people I've found affected by the Mandela effect at work. I really am because wow. in my personal life up until all of last year when I was just driving for Uber and doing like side stuff before I worked for a, a business again, um, I had some very interesting things happen, you know, with some crazy rides, um, blowing some people's mind with the Mandela effect that were sitting in my car. Um, but just thinking about it like family and friends i mean there's not a lot of people that I, I could really talk to right but recently just like the last three months or so i probably found like eight or nine people at work so i thought that was kind of odd because i know a lot of people they always complain about right they have not nobody to talk to they have right. no one to talk to right so luckily that's what's so great about this youtube community it helped me as much as i was helping them in the beginning it's true I mean, the thousands true. and thousands of comments I was getting just helped me immensely because I was, I was beside myself. I was on the couch for like three days when my son dropped those questions on me. And I went and started looking stuff up. And then that's when I found you and uh, Sean Indigo and, and these other guys that were talking about this like six months before me. Right. And I, and I, I couldn't get, I, I was just constantly just want to hear as much as i could possibly hear on it and i'm still kind of that way i want to hear about it every i don't know i enjoy listening to people talk about their experiences experiences and just talking about it it's just, it's the biggest thing to happen in human history and for someone to go okay oh, yes. so yeah all right we know it's happening so what so who cares yeah yeah what do you mean <laughs> what do you mean who cares this is like the biggest thing ever man I know I'm with you on this. I don't get that. I don't get that. So now what? Who cares? Okay, yeah. So Jif, Jiffy or Jiff used to be Jiffy. So what are you gonna do? I, I mean, that doesn't tell them anything. I don't. I don't get the people who don't think that it's a big deal. They acknowledge it, and then they just, they just say, "Well, who cares?" Right. So, so what does it matter? 
I, that's I'm exactly like, it. What does it matter? What do you right? mean? Yeah, what are you going to do with it? So yeah, what, what does do it matter? <laughs> I know. It's I an know. ongoing thing. What, what does it matter? It's a huge deal. Yeah, reality is shifting. What does it matter? <laughs> that just sounds so bizarre. So who cares? Obviously, you don't, but I care because this is my life. <laughs> And it's changing. <laughs> I don't know. It's so well. Crazy. I, I think. I think it's. I think a lot of it's just because you know, so caught up in the daily, right? I mean, most people were, were just mostly caught up in the daily matrix. You know, having to make the money, take care of the kids, whatever, 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 and being, you know, and I, there is something to be said about the present moment. I keep coming back to it. I mean, it happens to me. That's when I leave my channel. I'm like, okay, I've had enough. I'm going to go be in the present moment. You know, and it sometimes it's difficult, you know, it really is. It's hard to like, but at the same time, you know, and it's, and it's therapeutic to talk about it. It definitely is. It's, ther it's ther therapeutic to interact with others, to, to find out what they're experiencing, to make sure that you're like, not, you know, cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. <laughs> right. uh, and by the way, that's C-O-C-O, -C -O, not C-O-C-O-A. Now I have a question for you about when you left for like six months, right? Yeah. Was that a personal thing with personal reasons or was it like the, just had enough of the negativity and the trolls or can you say why that was? Yeah, sure. Um, thanks for asking. I, I, you know, and, and it still could happen again, <laughs> but um, it's like for me, like I, yeah, the troll stuff was big for me. Also, I felt like, you know, because I couldn't monetize my channel, I'm like, wow, like I'm spending a lot of time on this and there's like no money, you know, I can't make any money off this. And, I've got to freaking make some money right now. So I had to just turn it off because it's so compelling. It's hard to turn off. Mm -hmm. So like, okay, well, if I just, you know, put all my videos on private, then, you know, I can just, I won't be as, you know, drawn in to go down the rabbit hole. Right. And it did work. It did work until, you know, I started like watching other people's videos again. And like, then I'm like, okay, I get pulled back in or even more. So when I see things out in real life shifting and I'm like, oh my God, I got to talk about this. So, you know, I think that's mostly what it's about for me. Like it's, you know, you have to take breaks. I just keep coming back to that. Like you have to enjoy the present moment. You do, you do. Um, and you guys about the old videos. I mean, I still have them. I'm, I'm going to put together like a compilation of some of my old stuff. And then I guess I'll, you know, why not? I'll just address, you know, like someone was asking me the other day. I said, why don't you show your face? <laughs> um, well, uh, it's because I'm, I'm an AI but um, I have to finally like, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm not an AI bot. No, because I, you guys, I'm like, I just, to me, like I've always been into the radio part of this. Like I enjoy, and there's less stress around trying to like, you know, be like an online persona with like your face and trying to be a certain way, look a certain way. Yeah, they don't understand how it is. If they're not someone who makes, I mean, I have 900 videos. I used to right. show my face all the time. But I, I don't know. People know my voice. I don't feel like I need to show my face all the time. Now, I do occasionally make a video where I turn my camera on me. Right. I mean, I, I'm going to actually get a laptop here soon before I go to Peru and, and um, start doing more where I have me in the little corner of the screen. Right. So um, I wanted to mention, or I wanted to ask you, have you heard of the, the elongated skulls? I saw that, yeah. Now, I'm going to go to where they found like 300 of them. That's going to be amazing. In Peru? Yeah, that's going to so be amazing. I want to see them firsthand. My wife's from Peru, and so we're going uh, soon. And all of my, my whole family's going. And so I told her when I'm there, I'm going to rent a car. It's like a three-hour drive down the coast. And I want to go to Paracas and uh, maybe meet Brian Forrester, the guy who has his, his site. He's gone all over the world to the ancient sites. And so there's something with those elongated skulls. Yeah, I think so too. It's it's really... The it's, volume of the inside of those skulls is different. And the yeah. parietal plates, the plates are different. And you can't, the weight of them is different. I mean, yeah, they did the cradle boarding and stuff. The ancient people trying to change the shape of their head into a cone, which is interesting in itself. Why would they want to imitate uh, the cone heads? Right. Um, but yeah, I, I thought cone heads were only on Saturday Night Live. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. No, I mean, look at Nefertiti and, and Akhenaten and stuff. I mean, they have the long skulls. 
in all those ancient uh, hieroglyphs and, and carvings and stuff in Egypt. I mean, those, those, I, I don't, we don't even know the history of this planet. We don't, because I mean, it's, it's pretty freaking shifty. So I've always been fascinated with the ancient um, sites. Like I've been to Machu Picchu and stuff in Peru. That's it's awesome. Pretty cool. Yeah. So you know, he, you know, a lot of people are saying, you know, they, they, you know, a lot. I've, I've heard certain people say this reality is a downgrade. I disagree. You know what? I mean, it's just like there's still going to be duality, black and white, good and bad. You know, good and evil. All, it's still all that's true here. But look, look at the look. One of my friends, she went to a freaking island that definitely did not exist on my timeline just recently. And I'm looking at her photographs. I'm like, she doesn't know how lucky she is, man. She's on an island that didn't exist before. There's so many places we can travel to now that weren't there for so many of us and, and experience this whole new world. It's like the freaking song from whatever that Disney movie is. It's a whole new world. And it literally is. All these freaking animals. Are you guys kidding me? You guys, look. You guys are all badasses. Have you looked at your human anatomy lately? I mean, come on. That's got to be the most badass human anatomy that anybody could have. That's like, that, that's, some, that's some legit shit right there. Yep. And there shall be a new heaven and a new earth. There it is. I mean, I, I think there's a lot of upgrades in this matrix. I don't, I, don't, I don't see, you know, it being like some of the doomsdayers are saying i don't I, you know if, if you're seeing these changes these shifts bad thing i think there's a lot of they look like upgrades to me these animals are really really interesting i mean i wish i saw them around yeah, my i've never done a mandanimal video but I've oh, there's... Seen people have pointed out some stuff i never seen any of it right i mean th that's what's interesting about it like i don't see stuff in my own hometown of san diego i don't see stuff like it's not like i've seen a bird here that i never saw before or anything like that that's what's interesting because they are all kind of like not in our own reality bubbles they're like we're we're looking at other people's reality bubbles other sectors almost and so we're we're peering into the like i had posted this thing about what was it the the rainbow thing in arizona the, the mountain area in Arizona that's now rainbowy, like like the place in China. Did you see this? No, I only knew of China and Peru. Yeah, yeah. There's there a place, and and I posted that on Facebook, and that did get some attention. Some people were like, "What, what, what is this?" And they were like, you know, tagging their friends in it and stuff. And like, we got to go. Like, and, and so you, without even mentioning the Mandela effect, I did that. And it's interesting how many people were like, wow, you know, and I, I got the, once again, I got that look, you know, that, that little icon, the wow icon, like several times. And so that's kind of the way to present these things now. Just put them on your Facebook and go, hey, wow, check this out. And don't even call it a Mandela effect. Don't even like mention the word and see what kind of response you get then. That's when you get people's attention. Because this place, oh my God, it looks like another world. I'm going to see if I can look it up before we get off the air here. But it's it's like that never exists. I think it's I think it's Arizona. It might be New Mexico, but it's like what? No, didn't exist. I mean, you would have think at some point you would have seen it. You guys know what I'm talking about in the chat room yet? Let's see here. I'm looking for uh, my you know my favorite videos are the musical ones. It's just, I don't, can't explain it, but I love looking for the covers of people doing it the way I remember it and knowing that the original just is not how it was for me. Those are some of my favorite videos are the musical ones. Right. Okay. So it's, the, it's called the wave. It's in Arizona. I mean, I'm like, yeah, it's got to be on your bucket list. I mean, are you freaking kidding me? This is like crazy all right look you guys stand by i mean this, this is like this is part of the like the th look, if you if we missed it then we missed it but oh, i've I seen this okay so you know what i'm talking about i've then. seen this because i've seen some youtubers that went here and they were filming but that was just like a few years ago okay so you had you had known about I've seen this, this? Few years ago yeah i mean to me though like i'm like what yeah, that's cool that, that's so cool looking Yeah, but I don't ever remember this, you know, like in the 80s or 90s or anything. Right, that's right. But I saw it a few years, a couple of years ago. Not that long ago, actually. 
but I didn't associate it with the Mandela effect. Right. Well, you guys look at the go. Yeah, go online and look at the Wave Arizona. Look at the photographs of this place. It's just it's like, hey, I'm not saying it's a Mandela effect, but whatever it is, it's awesome. But the way yeah, my you know friends you want to check out. Yeah, yeah, totally, definitely on the bucket list. You know, I mean, as a photographer, and I'm a photographer, like, mm -hmm. to me, this is just, oh, my God, I got to go there. That's amazing. Yeah, one uh, cool place that I went for to see, seemed really cool for a photographer was uh, Bodie. Bodie, California. Ever heard of it? Bodie, yeah, I'm Coast not County. sure. Coast County. Okay. I did a little mini documentary on that place. It's like in, it's in the middle of nowhere, um, but the remnants of like the town is a lot of it's still there. Like five percent of it's there, but it seems like a lot. Um, it's just kind of frozen in time for like a hundred and something years, hundred and fifty right. years. It's like a gold, gold mining town. Well. You guys, I, th I think we probably should go. And how you how you doing there, money bags? You think you feel complete? Yep, I had a good conversation. Yeah, yeah man, it was awesome. We went pretty long. Man. I don't know how long we went, but it was long. <laughs> yeah, well, it's not hard to talk to someone who's going through an incredible thing that you've been experiencing. It. Absolutely. You know, that's that's the thing with this. I'm always. I'd rather do what we just did than like someone says, "Hey, man, did you see the game?" And I'm like, "No, I, know. I don't. I don't see the game. I don't watch games. I don't watch grown men throwing a ball around anymore." It yeah, it seems like such a waste of time. To I'm, I'm in the I, same place. I hate putting. I don't mean to put down people who enjoy football for their entertainment. No, yeah, for, for sure. For me personally, I just rather would. I don't be learning something or like. I don't know. I just can't do it. I can't bring myself to do it. It's so hard. <laughs> but uh, people, most people just want to talk about like just such, I don't know, small talk stuff. I, I've always been a deep type person, but now even more so with this. If I can find someone who, you know, I'll bring this up and then they'll, they'll like start asking questions and then I'm like, okay, game on. Because then, you know, that's the kind of game that I, I, I enjoy these days. Not just, I don't know. I don't like small talk. Absolutely. Okay, yeah. it's been fun. I'm glad we finally did this. This has been a long time coming. I knew eventually we'd talk. Yeah, and uh, yeah, me too. Thank you so much, Moneybags. I've actually, this has actually been something I've wanted to do with you for a really long time, actually. Just never, never had the opportunity and never, just never followed through. So yeah, I really appreciate it. And Everybody in the chat room, everybody that called in, we had a few callers. Thank you for, for doing that. And uh, yeah, on three, money bags. What do you say? Give me my countdown. Okay, three, one. Go create the reality that you want. Go out and create the reality that you want. That's what I'm we're doing. Play, I'm playing your song, Money Bags. Money. <laughs> Did you notice that? What's that? I'm no, playing I can't your... hear it. I can't. can't I just oh. Really hear, hear something in the background. You'll, you'll, you'll hear that I'm playing Pink Floyd's Money. Oh, yeah. Always Instrumental like version. Always, <laughs> hey, speaking about money, man, I Are... totally missed the boat on the cryptocurrency. Are you aware of that? Oh, my God. I did, too. Oh, my gosh. I it's insane. I was talking about gold and silver for so many years. And... I knew about Bitcoin at two bucks, and it just hit seven thousand something. It's, very no, I know my friend. My friend keeps saying stuff about this to me, and I like, I know, I know. Oh my gosh, I look at I it know. all the time, and I'm like kicking myself. I'm like, I could have just put a hundred bucks in the darn thing. <laughs> yeah, I, you know what? I think on the other timeline, I, I think it folded, but I think on this one, it worked. Oh my gosh, but I, I don't know. It's gonna collapse. It's like the biggest bubble in history. I know. It, it went from. Oh my God, it went from 700 to 7,000 just like in the last eight months. But I still have a feeling there's something not too very hmm, solid about it. So I'm still a little. Oh no, I wouldn't get in it now. That's like yeah. getting in housing back in 2007. Right. <laughs> it's like be, build, buying a mansion. <laughs> yeah, I totally uh, agree. No, but, but hey, I don't know. There's, there's always things, places to put your money, but 
I don't know. I think I think it's good to spread it around. I don't know. I'm still a huge silver and gold guy. I mean, they've been money for thousands of years, but I don't know. This whole Mandela effect has kind of taken me away from worrying about money. I'm more concerned about spiritual things now. Right. Which yeah, I'm too. happy about. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Yeah, I still want a nice car and stuff because I want to be. That brings happiness, whether you believe it or not. I mean, you can drive around in your little piece of crap and say, you know, I'm a spiritual guy and I'm happy, but. Eh, I'd rather be a spiritual guy than a car. <laughs> hey, I love cars, man. That's always, just me. <laughs> I, I know, me too. I mean, I've always loved cars, man. <laughs> me too. I want I, a nice I mean, car. I don't feel bad about wanting a nice car, but nothing wrong with having a nice car. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, we'll, we'll talk again. Thanks again. All right. All right, you guys. Later. Peace out. Lots of love.